I totally forgot what the intro is. That, that, yeah, that's it. What do I there's say? No, there's no, <laughs> there's there's no, no going back. No. Nine, what do I always say? 96 episodes. What do I always say? And, and we're back. back. Couch, Couch Company, Company Podcast. Podcast. I'm John. With me as always, Tyler. Wow. 96. At least I didn't I do that at 100. I don't even... <laughs> yeah, could you imagine that? Yeah. Oh my god! You might have heard him though in the corner here. Oh man, got a guest, Jeffy boy. Hello, What's thank going you for on? having me. You're always like, you, like Jeff is like was telling us he's like nervous to come on here, and you're then the host just like absolutely that. fucks the whole thing up. So you're, you're I'm, just, I'm saying you should have nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> I just am disarming fumbling. Him. Look at him just taking that bullet for you. We're talking I, about taking grenades. This, I appreciate grenade. it. Yeah. You know, I I think my nerves come from. I can't believe I did that. That's so <laughs> funny. I can't. I, I'm not going to n- mention the game's name, but that is what I'm nervous about. I don't want to mention the game's name that we always end up talking about for an uh, extended amount of time. Yeah, That's fair. This is a horrible no, start. It is a horrible you're, start, you're but that's what I'm afraid of. I, so I am going to make it my mission to derail any talk of that game okay. if it occurs. Okay. Totally. We, How, how's the channel doing? What would you play today? Um... Over at uh, twitch.tv slash what killed Jeff this week. Today we played League of Legends. <laughs> see, um, see how I teased that you, up? Actually? Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he set me up. Um, I but can't you, believe like, you, you didn't even blink. Yeah. You're like, well, today. Oh, sh-. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm in this really strange phase where I tried Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. Just wasn't my cup of tea. We can dive into that later if we want to. Um, and then somebody uh, won the bit war and is having me play Metroid Dread, which is low key my favorite Switch game I ever played mm. outside of like uh, Hades, right? Um, I'm very, very pleased with Metroid Dread. Uh, but today I feel a little sluggish. Uh, we drank a lot last night. Um, I don't, I woke up not knowing completely where I was and then. <laughs> I looked at the bottle of Sailor Jerry and it was empty and I got a, a d- double quarter pounder from McDonald's, mm, 20 piece mm. nugget, large Holy root beer, cow. and then got home, had some electric lettuce, streamed. Then I had another burger for dinner. I, I just feel <laughs> sluggish. That's I had, an American. I had, I had, electric lettuce <laughs> drugs. I had yeah, root beer, okay. root beer float, you know, with dinner. I, I just feel so gross right now. But thank you for having <laughs> it's me. It's probably like the <laughs> eight cheeseburgers you downed today, yeah. man. Dude, yeah. when you say double quarter pounder followed by the twenty nugs, like that's that's, that's what it's called, right? The double quarter pounder yeah, where there's two patties. Yep. The twenty. I, well, my order used to be five McChickens, no mayo, add tomato, twenty piece nugget, large fry, <laughs> double quarter pounder. Root Whoa, beer. That's an and all then, American diet. And bro. then a oh sleeve God, of Oreos awesome. and milk. Whoa. I, all at the same time? Um, wow. That's nutty. You're a monster, dude. That's awesome. How are you what? not a thousand pounds? I, I can't really do that anymore. So I did cut my order down <laughs> to that double quarter pounder, <laughs> yeah, 20 down. piece nugget, large fry. So I, I've been shrinking my orders. How so tall are you? Time. Six what? Uh, six five. Six five? Yeah. Like two, six five, 260. I, I should be around. 235, 240. So just a little, we're getting there. Progress, not perfection. That's, Jeff has like the great. best pecs I've ever felt, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Totally. He's working them out. Totally normal thing to say. Looks pretty good in a. Dude, yeah. He's wearing this new shirt. flamingo shirt. He's rocking Look at that. it. You almost got the little, like, uh, <laughs> should wear that tomorrow. I might. For the party. Dude, when your pecs touch, there's nothing better than that, right? I. Yeah. So the only, <laughs> yeah. I don't go to the gym. I'm not a gym rat. I don't really exercise, but I do do, I, my weight probably fluctuates like everyone else's. I do go down in weight. I go up in weight. But when I do notice myself getting out of that safe zone, you know, hitting the 250, 260, I have a very simple three step exercise that I've done probably since I was 18, 19, which is five sets of push ups, five sets of curls, and five squats. And I've been doing that. It's it's like a twenty minute exercise. I love it because it's a lot of core, so you don't have to spend a lot of time doing a lot of other things. And that's kind of kept my weight in check a little bit. 
Um, and I've most recently started carrying, I think I told you guys this, I started carrying cement blocks around yeah, my neighborhood. Yeah. What? So now people know me as like the cement block guy because they're like, hey, you doing that for exercise? And I'm like, I can't hear you. I have my head buns. In. So I had to take out a head bud or ear bud. Yeah. They're like, you, you, you doing that for exercise? I'm like, yeah. They're like, right on. I'm like, cool. So it's like everyone's like waves to me you now. Should tell yeah, you should tell them. Awesome. You're, just, you're just getting ready for the flood. <laughs> Yeah, so right. Like, I'm getting ready. <laughs> yeah, he's getting gonna, ready for what? Ah, uh, you know, it's coming. I feel like you, if you're carrying cement blocks, you have to have a gruff voice, right? Like you literally can't just speak normally. It, yeah, yeah. You're just too badass. Like these point, are cinder right? blocks. Like these are yes. basic ass yeah. cinder blocks. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's Dude, kind how of your hands not cut up. Your grip strength must be I nutty. I actually don't know. I do get cuts every once in a while from them, but. I think that's part of like the exercise because I tried it with dumbbells and they were just too easy to carry. Yeah. <laughs> like the cinder blocks offer a challenge where you kind of have to grip and hold with your fingers as well. Like you feel them slipping out of your hands. So there's like this strange, like Rocky movie. In, it, like it gets me pumped up to exercise because I'm like, yeah, I'm carrying these cinder blocks yeah, around dude. the neighborhood. Yeah. And yeah. That's awesome. I don't know. And you guys know me. I do everything like really traditionally. Like I don't like electronics. So I don't want the I don't want the stupid watch. I don't I just want my cinder blocks. That's awesome. That is straight from a Rocky movie. Like just running upstairs. You just cut to Jeff carrying around cinder blocks and then the <laughs> Russian guys like fighting a robot or something. Uh yeah. You ever Cla- seen Rocky Classic? Four? Classic Rocky IV. <laughs> you never see Rocky IV, dude? I don't think so. Not it's if like, there's a robot. Dude, Rocky's like training in the mountains, and then the Russian guy's like using electronics. He's like on a Peloton. He's like arm wrestling a robot. Or something. Uh, sure. <laughs> They're I'll measuring his heart rate and stuff. Apparently, it's hilarious. Creed's supposed to be great. Uh, I like the first yeah, one. Yeah, I like the first one. I. I don't know if there's more story to tell here. Like, you know, we've seen this a million times. Yeah, there's three of them. I understand that. I think we're kind of in Fast and Furious territory here. Like, Mm. if you want your comfort Rocky movie, right? You know, we're still trucking. But for me, it's like, okay, I think I think I'm good. Who do you think? This gets morbid. Okay, but you think Stallone has a long like for dude that big like. His his veins just will pop, right? Like at some point, all the uh, he's I don't he's know, on gear a hundred percent. So that's going to cut down his life expectancy. Like if you were, if you were to take all of like the uh, expendables characters, mm-hmm. what, what order? <laughs> well, do oh you my think god! They just well, start dropping. Isn't it? Uh, that's a great question. Who was in the? You'll have to remind me. Stallone, Arnold. Statham, Arnold. Uh, oh, yeah. Your Russian guy, <laughs> Russian guy, <laughs> not the not Bruce Willis. <laughs> Bruce Willis is first, right? Isn't he in? Isn't he in trouble? Is he health wise? Oh, I don't know. I, I think he's so. always bald. I don't know either. No, but like he uh, he like can't act anymore because he's got like Alzheimer's or something. I don't know. Was I talking? To, I think I was talking to Harbin about um, poor Harrison Ford. I was watching an interview with him, and he's all yeah, like he looks shaking rough. and stuff. Where it's like. Oh, so like what I thought was really good acting on Shrinking, which I don't know if you've seen that yet, but Shrinking's really good. I thought he was just like acting his heart out. Yeah. Turns out, probably just him. <laughs> like, Uh-oh. like, yeah. that's not good. Really well cast. And he's hilarious in that, that TV show. But yeah. like, between him and watching Tom Hanks pour something, he poured something on some talk show. It was like, I don't know, Jimmy Kimmel or something. And just watching his hand go, I'm just like, Man, and that sucks because he was. I forget. I don't even know what he was talking about, but all the comments were just like, "We must protect him at all costs." Yeah. The classic, like, mm-hmm. "He's national treasure. Don't lose him." Like that kind of thing. And it's like, man, that sucks. Yeah, time's know, anyway. moving forward, man. Yeah. man. Well, like, it's gonna come for us all. I was very surprised by the Harrison Ford, especially when yeah. seeing him in that show. Um, I was like, wow, that that is not indie, you know? Anymore. Right. That that one really. Well, I wonder. Speaking of which, how that movie's going to be. It's got a month, right? June? I yeah. Think it comes oh, out. yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be good. I There's wonder no how much time it's going to be Harrison Ford and how much of it is just like we just CGI'd the heck out of oh. and like did all the like the deep fake stuff and, yeah. and things like that because it's all over the map. Do you that. think they're incorporating that? And in, I was in the trailer. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh my I didn't know God, that. That's crazy. There is no way he looked that good in the movie. No way. Yeah. 
Like, dude, dude, I like. What are we doing at this point? It's just such a cash grab. We're clutching, man. There's dude, nothing. We don't need another Indiana Jones movie. There's just no purpose. What's new? Like, what's new that com- like, have, has come out? I was thinking out? about that. What is the best movie to come out it's in like recent new? times that is original? It's like a new property. Was, yeah. So I think about this a lot. Okay. I when I go to the movies, the theater. Theater. One thing that I'm always sad F- about films. Yes, the cinema. <laughs> the cinema. Um, I'm always kind of reflective during the um, movie trailers at the beginning. Yeah. Mm. Because I'm always like, I should go to the movies more. And uh, and you and you know how you do the thing like that movie looks great. That movie looks pretty good. We should go see that. And you completely forget about the titles. They just kind of go away. They don't get as much you know media. I think there are a lot of good movies out there, especially when you start digging into like the indies. And I, I would, I would be very interested to talk to like a cinema buff, somebody who's up to date, because I think there are a lot of good movies that come out regularly that we don't know about. Mm. That's would, my theory. I would agree with you on that, but I think, I think to kind of compound what I was saying was more of like, when is the next Star Wars? Yeah, like how many? Yeah. Like Dune was the last one that was like. Hey, you like the Star Wars and the Lord of the Rings? D- yeah. Dune is the next one of those. And it's like, okay. <laughs> like, wow. come on. Hey, the research department might, Sh- sh- uh, might t- have a- I would love the research department to, to in writing, be like, yes, the Dune movie <laughs> was next, better than yeah. Lord of the Rings or <laughs> Star Wars. Four. I, dude, yeah. He likes the new ones even. I can't imagine him well, liking it's, You like, got to think of it this way. It's so hard to be that next you can't, you can't because call it's like yourself that. in 1970, whatever, when New Hope came out, it's like that no one has ever seen special effects like that. It absolutely changed the game. Like, what would that look like today? We've come so far where it's like we've seen the CGI, and like, let's say it's the most incredible CGI we've ever seen in our life. Like, is that gonna be, is that gonna have the same reaction as like, no, it's like first that's Star Avatar. Wars? Right, exactly. Like, Avatar looked really good, I heard. Yeah. And that it's not people aren't going to see that uh, ten times. You know I, what I mean? I think Maybe it people, starts to veer into yeah, we're we're definitely hitting that technological brick wall. Mm. But with the incorporation of the tech, I think it comes down to how do we implement this better and how stylish can we get? I think we're gonna, we see okay now the technology is kind of fading. We we know what to expect. We know what it looks like. Who's pulling off like an awesome scene? Who has a really good angle or, or camera shot? Like there are people that are still coming up with new camera rigs, different ways to shoot things. Um, or even like one of my favorite movies is the Grand Budapest Hotel. I love that movie. And the use of color in that movie is masterful. So I think I think it's just how you pull off the style of your movie mm-hmm. and how it flows from scene to scene. I think there's like an art there and it's almost like a song like you're you're the musician you know i don't know anything about music but you have this note that goes to this note then there's a nice what's this called uh, for the listeners i'm trying to make like a like a wavy wave flow wave with my arm good flow yeah like a good flow to sure. it so i think that, i think that's the future yeah i i agree like there's infinite possibilities right so very much like music you're never gonna run like there will always be unique ways you you go about and approach it john but, john wick I'd count but it. But John, like, I think John Wick's a great example. We've had action movies like that, same premise, forever since stories have been told. But John Wick is fresh because, like, the choreography in those, yeah, probably some of the best we've ever seen. You know what I mean? Especially, like, just watching them all again. It's like, wow, that is, like, like go back and watch your favorite action movie from, you know, whatever time period. It's like they were not. Yeah, you realize the Matrix might not be the greatest. Right, like, exactly. Whoa, whoa, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's good. It is amazing. It but might like, be the best thing ever. Talk about like so clean. It kind of reminds me. We were talking about this yesterday, like Demon Slayer. Yeah, classic shonen plot. Like we've seen this a million times, but the animation is unbelievable. And that's why it's like a 10 out of 10 for me. Because it's like, yeah, okay, like. The story isn't anything crazy, but but this very important piece of the entertainment of this show is like peak. Yeah, and I I, I, mean? I I would like to have a conversation with you a little bit. Uh, you know, let me do some research and and talk about anime fight choreography because it is so interesting to follow the people that are in charge of those shots. Mm. It's not like hey, this person on Naruto does all the choreography choreography for every Naruto fight. Like, 
people move through the anime industry from project to project, and you can follow their choreography style from show to show. It's super cool to research. And yeah, that Demon Slayer has, I would say, at least three really good fights. The best fight I think I've ever saw was the Boruto fight, the the one with him and Sasuke and um, Naruto and Sasuke or Boruto it's, and Sasuke. It's Naruto, Naruto Sasuke and, and Boruto, Boruto. Okay. towards the beginning. It's like during the first arc in Boruto. That fight still blows my mind, but okay. I'm not gonna talk Imagine about if you could end every fight with one punch. Dude, one punch man. Does, like I will say. Especially oh, season best, one, dude. The best anime. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's, it's great cool. fights. My favorite fight in One Punch actually is uh, this might be a surprise. It's it's Saitama and Genos. When Genos is like, you just I got to see how strong you are. Sure. Just, they're in the middle of the wasteland, and he's just whooping the floor. Like Genos is just going all out. Can't touch this guy. Yeah. And then he just ends it in one punch. Just stops right in front of his face. So Looks good. behind him. A mountain gone. Yep. This is like that, that so sick. sick. But uh, yeah, that season one especially was really well animated. Uh, I yeah, I think that's a good. I don't know anything about like this is up your alley, right? Like mm-hmm. the art style, like you can probably understand and, and spot those minute details more. I'm kind of just like whoa, dude, <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. But uh, yeah, I would love to like you know have a more in depth conversation about that. I think anime is so good. Talk about peak fiction. See what you should do is both of you come with your top five fights, yeah, and then I'll watch them that, all. That's and, I, and then I'll tell you what the top five is. Okay, it's like I think, the real is. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. I just pick one punch. So like, uh, um, I think. Well, it's like interesting. It's like I think you're talking more about the the style and mm-hmm. the animation itself. But something I incorporate like when I'm thinking about my favorite fights is. Just, like the story behind, like what's the meaning oh, behind this gotcha. fight? I because like I was talking about Hunter Hunter as one of my favorite fights of all time because I just think like the stakes they go into um, like you 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 like learn about this character's backstory in the midst of this fight and this character's like one of those classic like oh he's like the big strong guy everyone knows like he's super strong so this is the first time we see him in action and actually having to try and you're like oh shit yeah so like we all knew this. It was so good. My only question is, would the Goku Frieza fight, the first one, be on your list? On it's Planet so Nimit? tough because like you go back and it's like, okay, this is like it's the worst pacing I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. But it's so iconic. Like Goku's pose when he turns Super Saiyan for Everyone the first time is it. the most iconic shit. Like where he's, he's turning around. I would looking. say it's almost up there with the Akira slide. Like I think yeah, the, I think yeah. the Akira slide is higher. Uh, of course, but I think the Goku I lo- transformation is. I love that that movie. Yeah, is it's so everywhere. iconic that you just once like, you see the, yeah. fr- the where once you see the first Akira slide, you yep. notice it in Every, everything. Yep. Dude, it was so funny. I was so we'll be this is a little foreshadowing. We'll, we'll be talking about the showcase, the PlayStation showcase yeah. later. And I was watching uh, Maximilian Dude's stream. Do you, do you know who that is? No, you, yeah, you, you know. Okay, Max. He's he's a big streamer. Um, and I, I only watch one streamer. <laughs> uh, what killed Jeff? What killed Jeff? Yes, <laughs> sir. Um, there was like this one trailer where this motorcycle is like driving down a, a a building, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll give I'll give the audience ten gift subs if he doesn't cure slide." <laughs> so I was like, "That's awesome." It's just so iconic. But yeah, um, we'll talk about that one because I'm actually excited about that one. I don't know. I don't know if I'd put. Goku okay. Freeze in there, but it's so legendary. I don't know. I'd have to think that. That would be a tough list. That's one that you, it, it's like a, you're, it, you consider on your list just due to how big and right and impactful that was, and it got so many. It's like this is an introduction to anime. This was you what you saw as a kid. Yep. This was a hype moment. I remember being like, "What? What episode are we on? Are, is, are they still going?" And yeah. you, you go to the schoolyard and be yeah. like, "Yo, did you guys see Goku?" Did, Wait, they're still going, and then wait, Freeze has got another form. It, yeah, it was like yeah. crazy, dude. I'll never forget Toonami, where they would mm. show Dragon Ball Z like ten o'clock at night. Him turning Super Saiyan for the first time was the craziest. Sh- I like you as a kid, you cannot <laughs> even wrap your mind. Like transformations didn't exist back then. Yeah, and it just blew your mind. And then there's so many classic moments: Krillin dying, Vegeta dying, 
Everyone dies. Frieza kills everyone. <laughs> What's his face turning into a giant monkey? Nope. Close though. Does he turn into a monkey yeah. there? Who? No. Goku or Gohan does. Not there. Not a Namek. Oh, I don't know. I just remember that was that was a big that deal was a big moment. It's like oh, there he's turning. Yeah. Um, like him doing a spirit bomb. That was cool. That was cool. Oh man, there's nostalgia rushing back. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. Speaking of owning the story, yeah, you're the DM for our. <laughs> I, oh, love, wow. I love. Wow, I love that transition. Champion. That was you. That was you went in the bag. There. I just I, the bag <laughs> I of rolling around. Yeah, I was like, all right, we'll pull it. I, I am the DM of a campaign of which you participate in. I and both of you. And I, we've, we've been giving feedback. Yeah, I implore everyone it. to go on Twitter, on Jeff's Twitter, and see. Uh, he's been making props. For like our sessions, yeah. So he made this like haunted house we were in, and like the basement. Did you see the letter? Yeah, I don't There's know what letter. that is. We didn't get, that the, we didn't get the letter yet. Foreshadowing, I guess. Uh oh. I um. You you got. You got I, oh, here's the thing about the letter. <laughs> you guys missed the letter like six times. No way. And I want. I've been waiting to post the, those pictures to Twitter because I'm like, when are they gonna find the letter? And yeah. I didn't want to post it. And you guys ha- see it and be like, what the fuck's the letter? Yeah. I kind of like that. I'm sorry. Are we allowed specular. to curse on this podcast? Yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah. try to keep it low. Sure. Um, no, you can do whatever you want. I curse all the time. I, I just catch myself every once in a while. I worry, I'm, lo- I'm worried that my family will someday <laughs> listen to this and be I'm like, sorry, oh, Tyler's family's not. They, no, they, don't, like, they, they don't care. The <laughs> I, w- I was trying to see if you guys come across it before I posted it on Twitter because I didn't want you guys to be like, what the fuck's that? Yeah. Like, I wanted there to be like this reveal yeah. because it is an important piece. Yeah. Um, you guys just haven't come across it yet. Okay. So if we missed it six times and we're on our <laughs> sixth <laughs> campaign, <laughs> or sixth episode, you did pass it more. It might have been more than six times. Oh wow! So oh, I cannot. Play. I, I thought we did a good job. I was there. Yeah. Li- listen, I was licking my lips. <laughs> I was like, "Go there, <laughs> go there, you little shit." You see a gleam <laughs> from the door. <laughs> yeah. But, um, oh, I hit this rock. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty <right>. cool. <laughs> I moved this piece of paper aside <laughs> and <laughs> see what's in this rubble. Yeah. Um, uh, anyways, so I implore everyone to check that out. What's your Twitter handle? What killed Jeff? Yeah, what killed Jeff? At what killed Jeff? Um, it's awesome. Jeff did a fantastic job. Thank you. It looks amazing. So check that out. And I would be really excited because I think the post is like, do you guys want want me to do this on stream? Show you how it's done. That would be an awesome stream to watch. Anyways, um, I was really curious because this is your first campaign. This is indeed my first campaign. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to gauge like where you're at, how you feel it's going, what you like about DMing, the challenges you're facing, things like that. Um, yeah, a great question. I, what challenges am I facing? It's like, well, um, I'm about to quit. quit. Whole, yeah, it's the whole podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I am absolutely having a fantastic time. Uh, one of the things that I did not anticipate as a challenge was the amount of different personalities. It, it, this is not like sitting down playing a board game. This is not something that you walk. This is something that an event happens during the campaign different personalities will carry that what happened whether it was a good or bad thing into the next session in the next session remember when it it's difficult to keep all those personalities either on track or invested or just calm because we usually do drink pretty heavily during these Okay, let's not mince words. When you're saying personalities, you're talking about the people that you are DMing are all different they are all different in real life and in character form. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, yes. It, this uh, this is more along the lines of I think handling you the could, you could put this on the us. people. Could, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. And I'm not putting it on you, <laughs> but that was something that I didn't even anticipate was going to be something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I really did not realize that this is like kind of trying to make a group of people work. Right. Um. And that I didn't even account for. Um. Yeah, that's one of the biggest challenge. Like, you know, I've DM'd a couple times, and mm. it and it's extremely hard. Like, nobody understands until they do it. But yeah, that's one of the that's one of the biggest challenges because everyone has when they're making your own character, you're so attached to it. They have their own idea and vision what that's going to be, and it's always like when it comes together, it's different than what you imagine mm-hmm. it because everyone's creating the story together. That me and Tyler have talked about this quite a bit, where. That's why I almost don't go too 
much into my backstory when I'm creating yeah. my characters because I want that flexibility and I want to feel that out when we actually start role playing with each other to, to like pivot. Cause if you're so rigid, you have like eight pages of backstory and I know people love mm. doing that. And I think that can definitely work. It's tough when it's like, Oh, you know, I know my character at every detail, they're not going to do this. And then yeah. it's hard to gel sometimes with the party. But I, one of the things that I, this is my first campaign, but I'm, I'm drawing a lot of, um, what, what do you say? I'm drawing a lot of li- lines or oh, line, what's, okay. what's that word? Where, where parallels. You connect, parallels. Parallels. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> math. I'm drawing a lot of parallels. Art. Art, art. <laughs> comes from math. Parallel lines. Come from math. Nah. Yeah, oh, I, I would, I would say that. design, yeah. yeah. No. Design. No. <laughs> um, Maybe, okay, I'm not going to go down that <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff, go ahead. No, you're fine. Uh, I've drawn a lot of parallels to things I've done in the past. Yeah. So I was a teacher, right? And you guys all make the jokes like, what's our homework assignment, Mr. Camfizi? Because I do give you guys homework assignments and things like that. I make you do things that may or may not be beneficial to the campaign that are not just playing D&D. Um, like we washed your car. Yeah, washing my car, <laughs> laundry. Um, Calculus. But I use, I do find that in my friend group, I'm not sitting here claiming like I'm the leader of the friend group because there is no leader of the friend group. But if there's something to be organized, I do tend to fall into that organization role. And then whenever I we played WoW, I don't want to connect this to WoW, but I was... A, a guild and raid leader for years and i would be like i think i might have mentioned this on the podcast i used to call like 35 year old married men's house and be like hey um talk to his wife like <laughs> on a dial 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 phone or what's it, dial tone phone what's the word it was called right, 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 right. the ones where you <laughs> actually line? dial the number yeah, landline yeah. Yeah. In line and be like, "Hey, is a Paul time. getting on to raid? How do I have to tell you guys about this? No, I, I should know what that is. But sure. I'm like, why? But I was like 17. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, and th- so this woman's like, why the heck is this kid <laughs> calling our house asking for my husband yeah. to get on the computer? We're like, getting a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> but guild leading and raid leading was I'm super similar to a lot of stuff that I encounter DMing for Dungeons and Dragons and. It's a lot of handling those personalities. Um, one of the things that I'm really trying to do, and I, and, and I don't, I, I haven't really seen a lot of results from this, but I want it to be very well known that you can come to me if something isn't working because I don't want it to fester and I want to move beyond it. Um, because I do want this to be a successful campaign, but I, I also don't mind if it fails. Like I am having such a good time with it like I almost don't care if you guys are having fun because I'm having so much fun. <laughs> um, and I was talking to John about this a little bit. Um, it actually has inspired me to pick up some things that I haven't done in like over a decade. I have not made any art since I left college. It crushes me all the time. Um, and making those props are, is probably the first artistic thing outside of miniature painting that I've done you know, again, since I left college and it just reinvigorated me. It, it really feels like this is the path that I want to be on. Mm-hmm. And this is getting like way out of D and D, but in life I want to make art. That is it. Like I don't want to have a nine to five job. I, I know that sounds so silly. Oh, Jeff doesn't have a nine to five job, but I truly do not think that is in my future. Um, so this is really kind of set me in like this weird kind of flow state that I'm absolutely loving um, just for me. Uh, And I, I, you know, you guys are talking about the props and things like that. I'm really glad you guys enjoyed them. I didn't know if I was going to show up and like put them on the table and be like, uh, like what the hell is this? (laughs) Um, But that's also part of the challenge is what props are, am I going to make that, that, that the, the house took like, I don't know, like 30 hours. The little scenic thing took another six hours. Like the note probably took six hours too. Um, so trying to plan out what, what you guys are going to encounter and you have to start on the props, you know, three to four weeks in advance to get them done in time. So like I'm already working on props for 
you know, a session we might never even get to. So wow. that's awesome. It, it's it's really cool. Yeah. Sorry for ranting. <laughs> no, that's fan- like when you I know like we were messaging each other. That was like so awesome to hear that like you know it, it re- kind of reignited your passion again yeah. with that, which is just totally awesome. I think we can all, especially at this table, can relate to that, right? Where we kind of get away from some of those things because we've all been in like the artistic field, right? Yeah, and you get you get like bored easy, right? So the thing is like th- this is an outlet the. Largely, I mean, like week to week, like, yeah, you have kind of this overarching like plot line and different things like that. But like every week, I feel like we're learning more about characters or story or whatever. And it can, like, who knows where we're going to be next session, you know, that, that sort of thing. So I like the idea of, yeah, it's like an outlet. You're still being like a character. You're still designing for like the over, like, overall thing. But it is so new each time. You don't necessarily get like bored of it. If that makes sense, mm. um, and then as a character, like you, you get to be able to grow as well. So, like you know, we started. It's like okay, you have kind of how you're playing your guy, and I'm playing my guy, and everything and stuff. Like even in the past like six sessions, like you've completely changed. Not completely changed, but like you've really grown into the character and kind of enveloped that character. And it's just like seeing how everyone starts to interact with each other, and and like friendships are made, and and different like alliances or or like mistrusts and, and different things happen. Like, I, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think artistically speaking, I know where we all stand in terms of like what we want out of D and D, right. Which is just like, just role play and have fun and just goof off. And it's like, you can't, you can't win right or lose or whatever. It's just like, so like you talk about it failing, like the only failing would be like, we're just not playing anymore. Like it's not, yeah. you know, so it's just, it, it's, it's good. It's a good, like, we we do it every Thursday. By Thursday, it's just like I need some creativity in in my life. I need some sort of creative outlet, and I think it's great. Yeah, thanks. I look forward to it every week. It is. I know it's still early. We're only six sessions in. It might be my favorite campaign already. Wow. I've ever played. I just think Jeff. I'm about to gas you up real <laughs> big here, but uh, just how you approach the game, uh, and I think your teaching background is so perfect for this. Like. I am definitely, like, if I DM in the future, going to steal it. Like, I love the weekly assignments, how we have to critically think about our characters, how we have to submit things to you. Like, you did this, like, role-playing event with us. That's, like, right up my alley. That's exactly what I want to see. I'm, like, I'm all about the story and, like, thinking about those kinds of things. And, uh, yeah, just how you organize it, I think it's just fantastic. So I am personally loving it. Uh, (laughs) I think it's fantastic. I know that we move pretty like at a slow pace, and sometimes as a DM, I know you can feel like, ah, oh, we're you know we're not getting far, and like I'm not being successful because we're not progressing through the book. But I truly think like if you're role playing, I have so many like memories already from these first couple of sessions in this first dungeon of just these little things, interactions with other characters that is like this is what the game's about, yeah. right? And this isn't in the book. I yeah. I have a ton of fun watching you guys play. It is like so mind bending what you like. I'm, I'm you gas me up. I'm gonna gas you guys up. Like you guys truly these characters. I'm like already so attached to. And I think one of my favorite parts is this is this might sound like a lie. I promise it's not a lie. I learned so much about you guys as people the way you play your characters, the way you approach the assignments, like it, it, it and it's interesting to mm. see, like I didn't, um, your cousin has like some very interesting takes on my homework assignments and, um, and, and they're seriously, everyone does things different. Like everyone interprets my instructions just a little bit differently and you get vastly different results from that, those interpretations. Um, and you guys have been, are doing a fantastic job. I am trying to make sh- make it not too overwhelming. I think I am trying to pump the brakes a little bit on some of the homework assignment assignments. That's why I kind of make it optional. Um, some will not be optional. Some will be required. But I want to make sure that um, I'm bringing a flexibility to the game. Like last um, session yesterday, we some of the people, you, everyone did, uh, an explanation of how they leveled up, right? So the whole party went from level one to level two. That was your suggestion, John. I re- you said you really liked it when you explain like, oh, my wizard went from one to two. He went from level one to two by 
reading this book and experimenting with this inc incantation or this or that. That was super cool to go around the table. But when that was first brought up, Nate said he doesn't like doing that because X, 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 X. Okay, well, there are some people who might enjoy that. Let's give them you know, their five minutes of fame before the session starts just to tell us how they see their character leveling up. It's not a requirement. You don't have to do it. But if you want to, why not? You know, it doesn't have to be a full commitment from every other table. But if it's a part of role playing that somebody enjoys, let them do it. Um, so I'm trying to be try to bring that flexibility to a lot of the things um, at the table, just so it, if somebody's personality doesn't go towards that part of D&D, I don't want them to feel pushed. But if somebody else wants to do it, go for it. Yeah, I think it's a perfect balance. And I just like speaking for myself, at least. I enjoy the assignments so much because it just gets me out of my comfort zone. Like I would never make a whatever the like a image board for my character. Well, like the that's mood the board. mood board. <laughs> the mood board. Like that's something that John would never do. And I've <laughs> never done. But it was fun like having to think about that and finding the images and Meanwhile, like presenting I'm getting it. PTSD because like another mood board. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> doesn't Fine. sleep. Yeah. Fine. So, Every campaign we do a mood board. <laughs> yeah. And like I don't know. That was a lot of fun. And like sorry, work campaign, not D and D. Right, right, right. Yeah. But um <laughs> and like for mine, I, I like try to like think about Milo's like musical theme with it. So I was like listening to a bunch of music. So it was just like totally a lot of fun. I Oh, go ahead, Tyler. No, I was, I, it's tough because like you, you do have people that when when they're looking at their characters and stuff, they're almost looking at it from like a, I want to end here. Like I know I want to be this like paladin, warlock, dual class, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to have this spell. This is my build. This is how I'm going to like be a god, right? So you like it, it's tough as a DM because you have to like cater to them. But then you also have to cater to people where, like, I don't know what happens after level five. So I've never gotten past a level five barbarian. I don't look. Like, <laughs> that's the whole thing is it's just, like, I, I want no understanding of it where it's, like, you know, even a level five is going to look very different, I hope, in this campaign than the campaign that we got to level five in at, like, Josh's or whatever. So it's stuff like that where it's, like, how, how can you bridge that gap because it's like you, you, you have to like make concessions, right? Like, so yeah, I don't envy that part of, of a yeah, DM part. it's like, like I don't know. that's totally opposite sides of the spectrum, right? right. And, and, and the beauty of D&D &D is there's not one right way to play it. Anyone, everyone mm -hmm. has their own vision of it and they're correct in their own interpretation of the game. And like min maxing is a totally legitimate way to play. You want to see the numbers go up, you want to be a badass. Like, I can respect that, but yeah, that's. I don't know how you approach something like that. Like, do you think about, you know, how to like incorporate that so everyone gets what they want out of the game? I never think about it ever. <laughs> um, it, to, that part of it, I really the I'm not at the numbers guy. I, I think that is one thing that's very clear. I, I as my this being my first campaign as a DM, I actually do that is my homework assignment. Like all the time is like, can I try to brush up on these rules because. I don't want you guys coming to me with questions that I'm not having to answer. The nice part of that is there's two other people or at least three other people <laughs> yeah. at the table who have DM'd and they can just help me out on a simple issue. Um, but usually when you guys are talking about character stuff, in terms of numbers, leveling up, I don't really look at that. I'm, I kind of take a, a Tyler approach of like, if you need help, let's work it out. Like I can certainly look into it. I can get you an answer. But you guys leveling up, you guys approaching your characters, all I can do is give you the tool sets that I'm comfortable with. And that's more of like the homework assignments, getting into character, um, things that I might find on the Internet. Um, so I, I really I just try to bring what I am excited about to de the table. Like if I was playing Dungeons and Dragons, these are the things that I would want my DM making me do. Because you did say, like, kind of get people out of their comfort zone. If you hate me because of a DM thing that I'm, or a Dungeons and Dragons thing that I make you do, I don't care. Like, that doesn't bother <laughs> me at all. I, this, it's, I feel like it's part of my job to try to push you a little bit. And I said at the very beginning of the campaign, um, it, you know, if, if something isn't working, let me know. And, these assignments, I understand that not all of, not all of them are going to hit. That's part of it. But I think some of them are hitting. 
um, especially from some of the feedback that I get. Um, I'm really interested to see everyone's constructive criticism cards that I had you do <laughs> yesterday because I haven't read them yet. So I'm really excited to look those up. But yeah, but see, <sighs> here's the thing: even from and I forget how I worded it because I know, like, I was trying to write it, and I, I didn't even drink anything at that point. I was like, I'm not making any sense. Like, I, in my mind, I am, but it's one of those like. I feel like we when we get into a run, it takes one time, right? So it takes one slime dropping off of uh, a ceiling or one trap going off that like, oh, I almost died there. And then it's almost like everything just like grinds to a halt because mm-hmm. now it's like, I look everywhere. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk, but I'm going to walk like really super cautiously. So if there's any trap, you have to tell me there's a trap there because <laughs> I'm going to see it. So it's like stuff like that where it's like, to me, that's always the thing that, that I just get bored with where it's just like, I don't care, man. Like, I'm not gonna do this in real life. Like, I'm walking through this door, if, and that's why. Like, I, I think I must have set off every trap in every room. Where like, <laughs> uh, spiders are jumping out at you, and slugs are jumping out at you, and skeletons are animating and attacking you. So it's like that's fine. Like, whatever. But it's one of those things. Like, it, it's a tough thing, and I don't think we use it enough. Um, like in all the campaigns we've done with like the passive perception, the passive understanding of stuff. You're just like, this is stuff that you just automatically know. Yeah. And I've never felt that click just in, in, in mm-hmm. anyone doing it, right? Where it's just like, okay, you walk in here, this is kind of what you see. And it's like, yeah, but does everybody see the exact same thing? Or it's like, how can you say like, okay, hey, John, you actually see this extra thing because you just know that like you're naturally more gifted at seeing something. Or whoever the elves are can suddenly see like, el- they, they notice elvic runes or, or something like that, elven runes. So it's... That's the kind of stuff that I would like to say. That was uh, spoiler. That's like one of my like mm-hmm. not criticisms. It was just like uh, to to keep things moving forward more quickly and to kind of like get w- where you want. I feel like that could be implemented to to a certain degree. But then as we're talking, it's just like yeah. But as we're like dilly dallying around or talking and doing these things, like that's where a lot of like the relationships are strengthened. And a lot of like the dialogue is happening and the funny bits and different things like that. So it's like. I don't also don't want to lose that. So it's a tough, like it's a tough tightrope to, to walk. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent with you. I would say, I don't know if I wrote this in the card. Cause I know I talked to Jeff previously about, you know, some of my criticisms and like, I want the record to state. I love the game <laughs> overall. It's yep. fantastic. Um, yeah, I think we kind of get bogged down sometimes. Like the thing about D and D is failing and losing is like sometimes the greatest part of the game Dude, i spent an inspiration just carrying yeah. a keg up the stairs yeah. i'm and like no what did i spend mine no, on? that's I did what mine. i'm doing because <laughs> I, I know i'm gonna be asleep the rest of the campaign i don't care i spent mine on like a freudian slip yes in front of the magistrate because, which is probably a bigger one but then is, i failed again <laughs> that did worse because that is so just yeah it was perfect dependent on like it's like no my character has to do this or he is a failure no, and like, he'll, yeah, he'll yeah, ruin no, him right it's so in character <laughs> like me doing that is like my yeah he's 10 like he's yeah. gonna not remember he's gonna slip you know what i mean um but yeah so like i guess my thing too is and i don't think i wrote this on the card so i wanted to maybe oh, address it let now. me make a note <laughs> um like we get bogged down in like really trying to win sometimes you know what I mean? Like technicalities. To, of, yeah, like, like little yeah. technicalities. I try to be so like if I ever do this, you know, I want someone to call me out on this as well. Where it's like, you know, I think like holding your ground and maybe arguing your position sometimes is totally valid, but I think overall it's okay to lose. It's okay to get robbed. It's okay to get one shot like I got one shot in the dungeon and I'm like oh this is a fantastic storytelling opportunity for my character like what growth I'm going to go through this is like his first setback an insane setback that's like going to define who he becomes so that's kind of what I like to see I I think I agree with your point where like things like that sometimes really slow it down too when we're kind of maybe harping on one thing a little bit too much so that's kind of something I would want to see, just maybe more relaxed. Like it's okay, we're, like we'll bounce back, guys. We're, we're, you know what I mean? The yeah, setback. Tough, it's tough too, because like I know, like we always want something to be like woven into the story. So like we yeah. might do something. Like, a couple, you know, sessions back when it was like, okay, are we leaving the house and going back to town or not or whatever? And it's just going back and forth. And it's like, okay, like at some point, like we're pulling ourselves out of the game and putting it in like a group setting of like this yeah. sucks splitting up. How can we make this work? Yeah. 
and I don't even know if that's right or wrong because it's like okay, but your your characters aren't necessarily doing this. So I think we finally like got there. Yeah, but it's like. Is that pulling so like how if we're harping on on more of like the the numbers part of it or the statistical part of it and that's pulling us out of the game, if then we turn around and we try to like retcon stuff to make it fit narratively better, does that then pull other people out of the game? Mm. So it's like this kind of yeah. give and take of like I don't want to be selfish of like everything has to fit the story at every point, including like yeah I know Nate you want to be able to morph into a dragon, but you can't because a, a deer makes more sense or whatever. I don't want to limit him right, either. Right. right. Yeah. So it's like, I'm totally, yeah, yeah a great I, th- point. I feel like it's like, we have to, we have to like grow to and be okay that like, yeah, this might not make it's sense. Like, like, yeah. Yeah, it's plot hole. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a fantastic point. I don't know. Something I didn't consider. I think, um, just going back to, you know, those bogged down moments that we all recognize, like we know as soon as they, I wouldn't say as soon as they hit, but they are very easily recognizable. Um, that just harkens back to the s- six different personalities. There mm. are six people at this table. Um, when do I have to use my teacher voice that I, you know, <laughs> um, and and seriously, I, I because I don't want to be that person. Like you just where we can all agree. The part of this is to f- sit down, have a chuckle, have a couple of beers with with the friends um, and just have a good time. But at the same point, if we do get bogged down because of something, and do do I need to take a more serious tone and uh, over and 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 become serious and disciplinary at the disciplinarian of over the D and D table? I do have that role. Um, so it is, it is hard. Yeah, <laughs> nobody yeah. we it is, get it. Um, I've been there, man. But then to that to that point though, like we're giving you all this feedback. What's mm-hmm. the feedback for us then? You know what I mean? Like if like what can we do better to make your life I don't think you can. I, I don't think there I don't have any feedback for you guys except for what I told <laughs> this is so such a weird like it's going to sound like really backwards but John asked me the same question. What can I do better to cuz he reached out to me which was super kind and was like, "Hey, I as a DM, it was like after one of our rough sessions. I just want to make sure you're having a good time as well." Is there anything I can do to help you? I really appreciate that text message because it, I was like, "Wow!" Like I've never received a text message. Dude, like I've that. been like and I've <laughs> been there where it's like you feel so pressured as a DM that everyone's having fun yeah. that you realize I am miserable right now. <laughs> like it's literally happened because it's yeah. like you know, you get DM like people don't understand. It's a huge responsibility. Yeah. It's a lot of preparation. It's a lot of pressure. Like mm-hmm. everyone has an expectation. They all look to you. I mean, that's, and it can be brutal. So. And you have to side with people. Yes. Like at yeah. some point you have to make a ruling. Yeah. Uh, well, and to answer how I answered John was the best thing you can do as a player to help me is to be giving me that feedback to, and don't sit on it. Like text me. If you don't feel comfortable texting me, grab another person who might share that view and, and be two V one because I need to know how you're feeling about something, especially if it's negative. And I don't, I think this is one of the few similarities that Nate and I have in common, (laughs) but I don't in this type of role, like you can't really offend me if I'm doing something wrong because I am, again, I'm having so much fun with it. Like I'm not going to be hurt. My feelings aren't going to be hurt. And if it is something uh, related to like another team member, I think that I, as a teacher, I'm very good at the compliment hamburger or whatever you want to call it. You know, one good thing, one bad thing, one good thing. Everything, everybody hugs and goes home. <laughs> um, so, so that's that's the only thing that I ask of you guys is um, to just be honest with me because I think this is, I think that's how we'll, we'll have the most fun. And um, I'm really excited. I I know next session. <laughs> Next session, there's going to be drama, <laughs> so just come prepared. And I'm excited um, because, based on the story, or just like where we left off, based on what's going to happen, and it might not be next session because you what you said, excuse me, what you said about going slow. I I'm thinking in my head you're going to be at this point at the end of next session. Maybe it'll take three sessions to get to this point, but you guys will all know. <laughs> 
when the drama is about to hit because oh, you will man. know immediately. I can't wait to see everyone's face. I cannot wait. Oh, it's awesome. I'm um, excited. But it is story related. Okay. But see, that's the thing is like, I thought like I v- really enjoyed last night. And maybe it's just because all the pressure was off me because I was just sleeping literally the entire time. But like even that, the fact that like I didn't do any, I literally didn't do anything. I thought last late, night was, was really just fun. like just weren't a part of that campaign. But like, it was so entertaining watching everything else and like understanding it. But then back in mind, I was like, okay, I can't know any of this has gone on. Yeah. Like I have to like, this is all going to be new to me. So like, I like that challenge of, all right, you're coming to me and whatever you guys say to my character is the information mm-hmm. that I can respond to. Yeah. So like personally, I love that. Yeah. Like I, Not- I, I am so excited to just wake up and then oh, laugh. Or, yeah, just yeah. like, all right, well, yeah. we're going to back to get the head of the, <laughs> yeah. of the dude we need to get the bounty of or whatever. Yeah, I can't yeah I'll, I'll say too, like, I know you were kind of, you know, you set the expectation it's going to be a chill night. I don't know how long this is going to be. I think with this group, dude, you could literally have almost nothing planned and it's going to be <laughs> f- filled <laughs> with... Like we will, f- we will be doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, I just think we have such a great group. Like, Dwayne is one of the best role players I've ever yeah. played with, yep. which is I, I didn't expect that for some reason. But he's like amazing, and he moves the story. Oh so my god, like, that's the thing is like Fantastic. he's like, all right, I'm going here. Like we're gonna we're just gonna do it, and, and he plays off everyone so well. Yeah, I yeah I love playing with Dwayne, but honestly, everyone is so fantastic. I just love the group dynamic. I, I think. I mean, you were talking about like your, and I know we gotta kind of move on to the, from the state of this to the state of <laughs> oh, Sony, ooh. but but I think I think you need to get that. I might even look at some hourglasses. And I feel like <laughs> yeah, we, I feel yeah. like we need an hourglass of like, hey, here's everything that's going on. Yeah. Talk amongst yourself. This is your time, and then you have to move to another location. You have to do and like. I don't think you need it for like the entire thing. I think that like after so long, we just naturally will get into that flow. But I think we can just get so caught up like discussing or talking or talking through all the possibilities of everything that like no one would do in real life. Yeah. Where like that's why I was like, I'm going to the pub. And I was like, I'm hurting. See ya. <laughs> like I don't do whatever you want with the boat, the contraband, whatever. And I think that like we just need like that, that nudge from the DM of like, hey, you guys have been talking about this for a, a while. And like if there's good conversation, obviously let it go. But if it's just like arguing back and forth of like, well, I think we should do this or this or this or this, I think the two things are you pushing the story forward. And the other thing that I think is going to be a challenge on your, and maybe maybe also sort itself out, but like keeping Nate and I with the group. That's the thing that I'm most yeah. worried about is because as, as far as my character goes, I did the thing. Now, mm. I, I haven't got paid yet, so that's going to keep me linked up to you guys for a little bit. And I like that, like, you think that we're like best friends, right? So yeah. like you're like Milo's all like super he, like he buddy, will buddy. be heartbroken if the party <laughs> right. So up. like I like yeah. that type of some connection there, mm-hmm. where like even if it's not like um, story driven per se, we built enough of a relationship, or there's enough of a thing mm. that if you introduce just like one other thing or one other stitch, or not that you're smirking, so I'm sure there's something there, like. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be focusing on is like, okay, how can we keep the party together yeah. that makes sense to me? Because up to this point, and I can, I probably honestly say this, I mean, maybe your campaign at one point and like Josh's campaign whenever we were like making up characters and whatnot, but like this is the first time where I'm like, okay, I have a motivation. I was hired to do this thing. I'm going to do it. And like everything I've done so far, I felt like emotionally invested in. And that's largely the first time that that's happened in a D and D campaign. So like, I don't want to lose that. I love that. Um, also real quick, go, go this, this BS of, Hey, if you want to do extra credit and do the homework assignment, let me know. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Mr. <laughs> Campisi. Okay. And if you don't do it, you're going to get too disadvantaged. Uh, on your next yeah, role. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. I'm sorry. You what? have, that's not how extra credit works. You have opted now in. opted in. Yeah. You, like, once <laughs> you opt into, okay. Because that's, a, that's, that's a Lucifer contract. That's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I own your soul. That, now. Was, that was brutal. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> man, was it, brutal? <laughs> it was a brutal. I, I am super pumped for that. Oh, this I'm a hundred percent doing awesome. it, but I was dying. But do you guys like that exercise or do you think it's a, just oh, curious. Awesome. It was amazing. It's gonna be awesome. This new one, or I'm, I am this new ones. I, I am so excited. Oh, good, yeah. good, good. I I want to go hard, but I don't have the artistic talent 
Like I, I don't. Oh, know. I was looking up like, yeah. okay, how is the Orcish alphabet? Like, <laughs> I don't know how to get working, parchment yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's I not gonna be. It's some. not gonna be that. I'll bring it to. But I was like, I have some pretty creative ideas, especially with my magic quill. Um, that might be fun. But yeah, anyways, Just for the audience, so Jeff, uh, th- which is now a mandatory thing, that we, <laughs> we have to opt it in. We have to write a letter to an NPC. Yeah. Um, and essentially create a person in the game, and mm-hmm. I, I think that is, and we've talked about this with like uh, a previous campaign where like we're making sh- crewmates and, and different things like that, like. Talk about building this like ownership of the world, yeah. But in real time, where it's like, okay, hey, like, there, like, it's not just like backstory. It's like you're interacting with something and you're you're breathing life into something that then the the DM can take and, and mold into like what he needs. I think it's brilliant. So I was so really good. proud of this one because some of like the mood board I looked, I didn't look it up, but I saw another DM do it, uh, Ginny D. Uh, she's kind of. Um, popular on the YouTubes. Um, so I was watching some of her videos and how she approaches DMing. But this exercise was kind of like, I didn't look it up. I was like, oh, this is something that I would do. I'm going to make them do it. And I don't know if they're going to hate me for it or not. But the thought behind it being required. So hear me out. Last night I said, the homework is voluntary. I did not announce what it was. And I said, if you message me, you want the homework. You have to do it mm-hmm. because here's my my thought process was as soon as I make somebody actually write this out because it has to be handwritten right this is not you're not sending me on this Discord do not send me on Discord do not text me do not send me a Google Doc you're putting ink to paper this is what I love I love old school I don't want to be typed something I want you to feel the pen I want you to write it you know, try to feel like you're the character writing the letter to an NPC you create and establishing some type of relationship, whether it is a financial relationship, it could be a sexual relationship, it could be a uh, an old family member. It's up to you. And I, I thought it was, I thought I was really proud of this one. Um, but that was the thing is like, I didn't want people hearing the assignment and then bailing because then that's not right. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, I actually read what Jeff's making me do. I don't want to do the assignment anymore. No, 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 no. It was either you want the assignment or not. Yeah. And once you say you want it, you're going to do you're it. In. Is there yeah. a reward for the assignment? Do we get no. like, inspiration for doing it? It's just, you're just doing it. Or- yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, deeper character. Dude, the, the reward in itself is a deeper connection yeah. to the world. So, yeah. like, again, I'm 100% on board. I was just reading. I'm just <laughs> laughing. I'm like, that's not extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a it's punishment. The definition. <laughs> definition. Yeah. No, I, and, and I think um, just going back to Dwayne, I really want to shout him out. Not that, and I think we can all agree. I, I think you guys are so kick ass. Like, every one of your characters, especially when you were like doing some of the role play stuff and the backstory is all awesome. Dwayne, um, and for the listeners' background, myself, one of our other players, Dwayne, and one of our other players, Jabbo, had never played D&D before. We tried years ago on 3.5. I tried to DM. It failed because I basically made it an entirely different game. I was naming abilities like they were, you know, Bloodborne abilities and things <laughs> like that. So it just completely failed. Um, but we still have memories of it. But we started playing D&D with Nate, John's cousin. Uh, it was a chunk of time ago. We, we had like an, a year long session or campaign um, that had a lot of highlights, but I invited Dwayne. I said, hey, Dwayne, we could we need a, a third for d and I know you were interested. Would you want to give it a try? I'm not DMing. We have a, a, a DM who knows a lot about the, the game. Um, and he was kind of reluctant. Dwayne was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to like it, but I might as well come hang out with you and drink. And Dwayne took to it so fast with his first character named Kiwi Pie. Um, <laughs> he just, and, and Dwayne has told me, he's like, it's one of my favorite nights of the week now. Um, because I, I think Dwayne is so deliberate with his actions and he can think on the spot so much better than I can. Dwayne has these like brilliant, mo- like brilliant moves, just being a doofus that mm-hmm. always work. And I don't know how he does it. Um, I, the only thing I could say is Dwayne is low-key very theatrical and what I like acting I don't mean like um I don't know where I was going with that but he he just has this innate ability to 
become a character and I don't and he, but he's never like been that like theater kid in school like it's so I don't even know where it comes from like Dwayne is such a he needs the outlet man it's, it's the creative outlet it's a latent power yeah. dude but he yeah. yeah he never breaks character nope <laughs> he and and the thing is too what's so genius about what he does is he has like this kind of you call it a doofus like character mm-hmm. like you know he's the fool he's playing the fool of the party the funny guy but you, it, that sometimes can be a slippery slope where it's just like, oh, look at me, guys. I'm just doing something silly. I'm doing something stupid, and I'm just the comic relief. But he, like you said, it's so deliberate, moves the story along. He is doing silly things, but it's like exactly in character. You mm-hmm. can see the growth of the character, too. I just think there, it's so good. There's a, yeah. there's a difference between just being dumb. So like, if you're playing a dumb character, mm-hmm. right, you would, you would assume like, okay, real life, it's like, Let's say your average intelligence, you're just like, I'm a normal human. <laughs> I'm going to play a dumb idiot, whatever. So it's like anything that you would think a rational person would do, do the opposite. And Dwayne doesn't do that. Dwayne is like literally like playing this character, but you understand from his point of view why everything he does seems like the smartest, most like <laughs> yeah. sane. And it's such a talent to like, yeah, no, that makes sense. Like, I never once questioned, like, dude, you're just doing this to be dumb. Like, you're like, why <laughs> yeah. would why would you ever do this? Yeah. He hasn't made one of those things. Like, it's always been like, like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like it's always made sense to me, which it's, maybe makes my like, character dumb too. I don't know, but like, <laughs> it's like almost complex in a way, right? where you would think the dumb characters like <laughs> super one no. Maybe we're giving him too much credit. Maybe. I don't want to blow him up either, but like, but like Dewey's it's like, really good. There's yeah. actually like some layers to this guy. Like, you would never. <laughs> think it's i'm very excited to see where it goes no it's it's fantastic i I, think everyone's great i i I mean just a moment of his brilliance last night whenever he was uh, he was put in charge of the contraband and dewey's like perfect he's dewey was like i'm gonna go hide this where nobody else knows where it is and we're like yep that's what he would do and it's like usually when you fuck over the party like that it it can be a really negative experience but again he does it in a way where it's like no, absolutely. <laughs> like everyone's on board, totally in character. Like last night, one of my favorite moments in the campaign so far is him uh, with this exchange with the with the dock master, and he's like, "It's like what a rogue, like perfectly role played. Yeah. Like you know, he knows the tricks of the trade. He knows like grease and palms. And, like he's using all this awesome lingo and stuff. Give me, give me this deal now. I'll come back to you later. Yeah, you know, just it's so just like, yeah. smooth, yeah. so like." And it's like, oh, yeah, this is Dewey's forte. Like, he yeah. knows how to talk. He knows, like, the kind of dark side of the sar- salt marsh. And I don't know. It's so but cool. I'm so excited to interact. Because, like, yeah. again, Nate you, and I were out of nothing. that campaign. Yeah. So I, I, all I know is yeah. I'm getting 65% of this booty whenever, <laughs> whenever, yeah. whenever I wake up. Right. So I can't wait to see what he considers 65%. <laughs> and then does my character... Like, what does he do? do? Yeah. Do I consider yeah. like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, sure. Like, oh, man. I think yeah, I'll be good. if, and I don't know if we want to end on this or, or whenever, but I think one of the beauties that I'm experiencing as a DM is having different levels and of, I don't want to say of skill, but different levels of comfort with D and D. Right. So, cause you guys have been playing longer than we have. So we have like the most experience. There's like three of you guys. There's two of us in the middle and there's probably two like really new players, right? So what I love about the new players is they might be scared to like do a couple of things, but they approach the game with such fresh eyes that they're like, well, I'll just go over here. Or, you know, so it is, um, I don't know. It's just, I can't stress enough how fun it is to watch you guys interact. And and it's even fun to watch you guys interact when things don't go great. It's you, the best. It, it's, it's the best the part. Best part. Yeah. I love it. Rolling so a much. one is like the best thing that can happen. Like when Milo yeah. got shot in the head, I was like, "Oh, I didn't know I killed him." <laughs> Dead. <laughs> and I burned through all my spells too. I put up shield. I fucking did I, everything. I, I died. I love it so much. Yeah. But again, it's like I see that as such a golden opportunity. But see, that's also a perfect. Uh, we yeah, we can we should probably be fun. But like that's a perfect thing where it's like okay, character wise. Should I wait four hours and get a short rest in and heal up from a mechanical oh, standpoint? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm tapped you. I'm tap the heck out. Yeah. Let's kick in the door yep. and, and run it's back so into the, awesome. the haunted mansion. Yeah. Anyway. Well, we 
I, I definitely can speak for the group. We, we appreciate everything yeah. you do, all the effort you put into this. Cause I know you come super prepared, um, every week. So that's just, well, thank you. The challenge is for do. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So that was the state of D and D. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. we move to the state of play. Is that what they call it? I, th- this is a is showcase. It, showcase. The state yeah. of plays are the you know the the shorter, shorter ones, okay. ten to twenty to half hour. But this is this is the, uh, this big, is the one. big one. This the is the whale. Big one. Mm. So PlayStation had their showcase uh, this week, right? Mm-hmm. Wednesday. Um, I guess last week. If you're listening to this, ugh, ugh. But, uh, I always do it. But anyways, um, I am very curious. Let me get my phone out because I took notes on every single reveal. Yeah, are we going chronologically? How do you have your notes set up? Chronologically, <laughs> how do you have your notes? Because I, I would just like something would come up, I just jot down something quick. Okay, and, good, good, good. Yeah, good. Okay. My okay. notes are also set up chronologically, but I only took notes on the ones that you care about. I care about. No, that's totally fine. So I was a little greedy. I'm, no, I'm sure we'll be blowing past a couple of these, uh, but there, there are some that I'm like, okay, let's. I mean, I want to talk through some stuff. So we're using. I guess we're saying John is the. I think John's the lead. The lead here. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Um. So did you write down a, a thought for every entry? Just a quick blurb, just that's so fine. I could that's remember. Like, to, I just need like the name, and I can yeah. be like, "Oh, right, here's I think my thought." It, okay, moving. I, I was, you know, I was trying to do this at the same time, so if I get a name wrong, I apologize. But um, all right, here we go. So we open the showcase with yeah. this. We just jump right into the trailer, um, and I believe this was not a gameplay trailer. I think this was just uh, CGI, CGI cinematic kind of trailer. So it's called Fair Game. Z- is it games? Yeah, I know there, the there's dollar a dollar sign at the end. I read that, <laughs> that as fair games. That doesn't make sense to me, though. Is that not fair games? I thought it was fair games, too. I don't, gotta be fair I games. think it's fair games, but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah. Regardless, <laughs> so this was like a kind of heist. Like they were, you know, yeah. trying to rip off like rich people or something. It looked really weird to me. They're like shooting grappling hooks and stuff, yeah. which I know Tyler loves, but I, I love good grappling hook. Yeah. Um, I. Didn't care about it personally. I don't know how you guys felt. I, I wasn't blown away. It didn't seem um, like my cup of tea personally. But um, to me, this was Sony's one of their entries uh, into the free to play model, trying to get that battle pass going. I assume this is going to be it. Um, we know for sure that Sony does have an initiative to um, try to branch out into these models, which they don't have a ton of experience with. Um, so that's how I took this game, but didn't really do much for me. Yeah, it was like Watch Dogs had a baby with like Payday. Yeah, just yeah. Like, I was okay, thinking sure. Payday, yeah. which I'd rather play Payday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah let's not get crazy. <laughs> I love Payday. See, I can't stand Payday. Why? It's I don't, too old. I, I don't like Payday Oh, either. well, now. I, yeah. At the time, it was fun. No, I, I I have yet to see a good one of those. I don't think Payday, payday 2 was, was getting there. I, it was, it was getting, getting there. there. I don't think getting, it was good though. The I don't improvements they made though, like if the, if they if you kept that trajectory, I think you could get a really awesome Maybe. game eventually. It's such a weird like, like I'm trying to think of all of those type of like heisty games. Yeah. So like yeah. we just played that. We played the what was the one, uh, uh, Ink something. Uh, it was like the De- De- deceive Ink or something like that. Oh yeah yeah yeah. We I know what you're talking about. And like that was oh, yeah, it was yep. cool, but it's still like it's not really good like at the end of the day people just running around shooting each other and killing each other yeah uh that robin hood game uh, same thing yep. like it's just like i i Devolves. liked what was there but it gets to this point where like if you in my mind if you can't get into a game and we're, we're talking about this is we know what the hell this game is it's, it's a <laughs> cgi trailer whatever but if you can't play a heist game where the people can go in sneak in do everything correctly get the the money or whatever and get out without ever setting anything off or having any type of like other people realizing what the heck happened. That is awesome. Yeah. I I just have yet to see a game that can be that way. I think you can do that in payday two though. You can, you can be totally Uh, undetected. Yeah. Kind of. Well, payday two isn't, uh, they're not playing other people though. You know what I mean? What do you? So like payday two, you're playing like CPUs. It's not like, I'm talking like a PVP. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. I guess technically payday could, you could do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that, like well, a the problem with like that. I've always like since I was a kid, I've always had this kind of idea revolving around like some like one team's guarding something and yeah. then the other team's thinking in. And the problem you run into is the team guarding something shouldn't know something's going to happen, mm-hmm. but obviously you're playing a game; they're going to know. Right. Like my brain kind of goes to like if you're the guards, 
you have like you're locked. You can't move around freely. You have a designated path. So whatever guard you pick, you see what his path is and you just walk back and forth. <laughs> and while you do know something's going to happen, at least the opposing team can set up and manipulate mm-hmm. where you guys are. To try or you to, have like a certain like line of sight, like you have like a like you if you're looking up into like the rafters and like let's say yeah. it's like Batman's coming in to get you or whatever, yeah, like you actually can't see into darkness, yeah, type of thing, yeah. But the problem you run into is like how awful experience would it be if you're the defending team and you never see the offensive team? It's like oh, we lost after just well, that's, why, that's why I think these games minutes. are so hard and for for Sony to pick this type of. Again, not knowing what the heck this game <laughs> yeah, is, right. but for Sony to pick this type of game where, like, I'm talking specifically balance, that's so tough. Like, and we'll get on other games yeah. and stuff on, like, oh, like, maybe Bungie's thing makes sense, like, is, like, a multiplayer thing that brings people in. But, like, yeah. for something like this, that's just, it's a weird choice, but we'll see. I think, you know, my thought with this game and some of the other games that we're going to talk about uh, that try to go down this route and this model is you're not you are asking the players of a commitment like you, you, there's already so much to compete with in these types of games and models these free to play models you need to convert people from an already beloved model and that is very hard to do yeah. you need to pull somebody off of their time commitment to League or Dota, you need to pull it off of their time commitment to Valorant or CSGO, um, Fortnite, whatever. Um, I think these games are, uh, I think it's very hard to pull off. Yeah, I think they're they're trying to hit a home run, right? Yeah. You're trying to be the next Fortnite. Um, you need a new which, genre. If you can do it, you win, right? So I, mean, I, get, I get why they go for it. Maybe they're brilliant. Maybe it's because there isn't this genre out there yet. Yeah. And I, we just have haven't seen enough. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was okay. more speculative stuff than I thought I was going <laughs> to yeah, be for this no, game. Yeah, right, yeah, moving yeah. on, sorry. Um, okay, so the second one, Helldiver 2. Heck yeah. Uh, did you play the first one? Yeah. Is it good? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I... It wasn't bad. Did you play the first one? I did not. It was fine. It was like one of those, you know, trailers. It's trying to be funny. It's, you know, with this recruitment style kind of yeah. video. And then it looks so boring, dude. I was snoozing during this one. So the first know. one, the reason why this one is, is uh, quote unquote special. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a Risk of Rain situation. So Risk of Rain 1 was this like uh, side-scrolling okay. platforming thing. You're shooting aliens and everything. Risk of Rain 2, suddenly it's third-person action. You're It's the same game, mm. but now you're like in it. In in it. it. Yeah. So Helldivers 1, top-down, isometric, Diablo-style, like top-down shooter thing uh, where like you still had a cape and you if you like spun your cape like 40 times or something, you got an achievement and stuff like that. So it's just like, it's goofy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought it was poorly balanced. I thought the skill, like the the difficulty, like ramped the heck up. Where it's like, if you're not playing with a dedicated group of people, it's like, this kind of sucks. So then going and playing this thing, where it's like, oh, now they're going to be you're in like third person. It's almost like a, it looked like a better looking uh, alien defense force, mm. which I'm here for. Okay. Tentatively excited. I think it really depends on like, is this going to be like a? Because I'm pretty sure Helldivers One was a freebie. Uh, at some point for PlayStation Plus, okay, I think. Okay, I don't remember how that worked out, but generally speaking, this is like a like a twenty dollar game where we all just like hop on, play a little bit, and just kind of like dick around with it. By all means, sure. Otherwise, Risk of Rain Two might be as kind of where you should be playing. I think that this um, this did not blow my skirt up very much. <laughs> um, this was uh, <laughs> this was. I looked at this trailer and I I it did I it got a chuckle out of me. I did chuckle. Um, but the gameplay itself, I'm like, wow, they are really just shoot spam shooting into a crowd of like alien creatures. Yeah, and I was just like, mm, mm, just pass. You know, I think there are people that are looking forward to this game. I think they're out there. Um, I I think this was a pass for me as well. It really depends on how to like, and not to keep bringing up Risk of Rain, but it depends on how close does it line up with Risk of Rain. And the whole point of Risk of Rain is you can get like you played that one. Yes. Jeff? Yeah. You can get so overpowered. Like the whole point of it is to break the game, where you're just like you're so godly. It's a joke, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you can get to that point in this, which I don't like, if it's anything like the first one, you can't, which is a little rough. We'll see. But well, you're playing with your friends, so like, yeah, you run into the issue where, like, I guess you're all godlike at that point. That's oh, kind yeah. of the goal. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the, gotcha. the thing with Risk of Rain is like, as you're just building powers and building it, and like you could have a different build every time. 
But if you just get lucky with a build, it could be like you're sh- shooting so fast, it like it doesn't. Yeah. You just melt but everything. When we talk so about fast this, or jump so high or whatever, where you know you run the risk of like, oh, my buddy picked a better build, and I'm like, you know, I can't compete. Yeah, and yeah it's but it's like, different every time. Okay, and like it, it's yeah. not it, you're not competing per se. Yeah, I got you. But yeah, I mean, it, we'll see. I don't, yeah, do I, I think that's going to be like the, <laughs> yeah. the end all be all? No, but yeah. I do applaud them for A, getting another game together and B, uh, trying something new. I think it's cool. I, I, I really applaud when games are like, okay, we're doing this top down thing. Oh, now it's third person. Oh, it's side scrolling. Now it's third person. Oh, now it's the, like, uh, what was the other game that just uh, did it with, um, uh, it was like pink and blue and you have a sword and you're doing, it's like a, almost like oh. a Souls like esque. Oh wait! I thought you were talking. <laughs> I thought you were talking about uh, Beat Saber for some. Oh reason. no 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 no! Although that's the, we'll talk about that too. Uh, shoot, I forget what it's called. It's like Void. Uh, it's not Void Bastards into the Void. I don't know. Anyway, another game is doing that where like yeah. they're they're like it's the evolution. It it harkens back to oh remember when Mario was a side scroller? Well, guess what? Now it's sixty four or whatever. Mm. I like that. I like okay. that evolution of games where they're just willing to try something. No, I, I agree. I'm not excited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next agree. one, though, which is kind of the first one I, I was paying attention to. So uh, Immortals of Avium. Yeah. Uh, this one kind of like a Bioshock-y. I, by my note was first-person shooter, Ma- spell-slinger kind of thing. Yeah. Looked pretty cool. Like, the combat looks pretty fluid. You're shooting a lot of shit around. I have no idea what's happening on the screen, but... I was interested. It, it didn't okay. look bad, so I was. I wasn't. You know, as Jeff puts it, my skirt wasn't up. But maybe there's a little gust. <laughs> it there, moved. There was a quick breeze. Yeah, it moved a little bit. Above, I was like, above okay. the knee. Yeah. So this was kind of the first one. I was like, okay, this is this is a game. It's a game. I you know I'm checking it out a little bit. People have been talking about it. Yeah, for it's a little been bit. talking about. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Jeff? This was not a Jeff. Oh, oh no. I, I, okay. I feel bad because I'm like, no, 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 like three in a row. But I this one did not strike me any which way. Yeah, I, I think it was almost there was too much stuff flying around for me. It, it, the, the hands were weird to me. I, I, don't, it <laughs> yeah. just, I don't I looked at it and maybe my brain wasn't like comprehending it correctly or something. But this game just looked um bland to me and i i, mm. I feel bad but that that's what i got from it <laughs> i want i want the next doom eternal that's yeah. not is really doom. what that's I, not the next doom you don't think no oh see that's what i thought it looked like like i thought it looked like it was like a, oh, okay i could see that like just kind of adrenaline you're just I just want to through. Fly. so yeah. uh, have you guys ever played um ziggurat mm-hmm or Ziggurat, well, I guess if you can play with the Ziggurat, Ziggurat 2 is also out. <laughs> but, uh, Ziggur- Ziggurat's kind of the same thing where you're like slinging spells mm-hmm. and you have two hands and you're kind of like going and you have to pick like, like one spell could be like, oh, this is like a super like gunfire, like a, like a mini gun almost spell and this one's like a shotgun thing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's this like rogue light type of thing. I was getting a lot of vibes from that, but this at least looked like it had somewhat of a story. A couple lines, but like even the lines, I was like, it was okay delivery. Like, yeah. It was fine. Yeah. And like for how just middling to bad for spoken was, right? Which is kind of mm. the same thing. Yeah. But this is like first person. Like maybe you kind of could be get get that like like magic itch. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But so yeah, I think that, that's July. I think. Yeah. Oh I th- wow. Okay. Yeah, I think if th- something that this game could do to hook me is a interesting spell system where maybe you are crafting your own spells you're combining spells for different effects i think that could be really cool um it, there's a lot of lists out there like what is the best magic system in games and i don't recall the name of what everyone says is the best game or magic system in a game but it is very much of like you have a frost spell you can combine it with a, like a holy spell and you get like this crazy different new thing so if there is kind of that interaction with the spells maybe i'll be interested i think this is another one where i might just need to see a little bit more what is the story like you said is what are the boss fights did we see some boss fights i couldn't even tell mm-hmm. um i think i just need to see a little bit more yeah no, i totally agree with that this is probably going to be a game where it's like i'm going to see what the reviews are if it's really good I'll probably yeah. check it uh, yeah. out. Yeah, right? I mean, I think eighty or higher. I'm, I mean, honestly, yeah. honestly, like for something like that, that could just be because I'm thinking, okay, Diablo comes out June. Yeah, provided that it's not broken on launch, <laughs> that's going to be me for gonna, yeah. easy a month. <laughs> yeah, 
I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to really try to give it the old college try. Day one? You going in? Wait, when is I, it? I, I, June 6th, if you didn't geez. buy the yeah. expensive one. Yeah. Yeah, I should be good to go. That's soon. Wait, that's like yeah. next. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm very <laughs> I got to pull my pants I was up. talking to Nate about this where I'm like, I'm worried that you're going to come in like weeks late. I'll do. You know I will I mean? do my best. I can't like, well, make any promises because I'm very behind like, on my games. Yeah. Which is totally on me, but I'm going to do my best for you, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Next one is I kind of alluded to this before. It started off like a motorcycle on a on a building. No Akira slide. Disappointing. <laughs> But uh, my note is on this is uh, Sword Guy from Overwatch. Uh, what's his name? Genji. 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 This looked like you were playing Genji, which is kind of sweet. Like he's like blocking bullets. He's like dashing and I'm, shit. I'm guessing you never played the first one. Yeah, this okay. is Ghost Runner too. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't play the first one, so it looked cool. But did you play the first one? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Very good. Uh, okay. It's. Well, did you play the first one? I did. Was would it good? You, would you say it's like Mirror's Edge if Mirror's yeah. Edge was good? Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Wait, okay. Mirror's Edge is not good? Not compared to Ghost. Uh, okay, so Ghost you guys Rider. are excited for this. Yeah. I, oh, I think it looks okay. stylish, man. It, it did. Yeah. I was interested in this. Yeah, We got a couple in a row where I was like, okay. This, this, this one didn't make my paper list that I brought, but this one okay. was one that I was like, okay, now now we're talking. Now we're speaking my language. Yeah. Um, I did. So my thoughts on the character on the bike was very Destiny. I thought that was like straight, like a Destiny ripoff. I was very confused at first because I thought it was Destiny. Um but yeah, I'm I'm pretty pumped. This is this game should have some pretty unique movement in it. Um, I'm I'm hoping to see that. I think this is a very small genre. I think this is a uh, a type of game that is kind of has a cult following. This is by no means going to do blockbusters. It might get some critical success, but probably not um, financially. Uh, I'm excited to see it. I mean, they're, they, they're giving this away left and right. So I think Epic gave it away. I want to say it was on Game Pass at one mm-hmm. point. Okay. Um, and it's always on sale. So it's like you could pick it up now for dirt cheap. But it's one of those things I think the biggest issue I had with it, and, and maybe it gets better, maybe just get used to it, is I thought that the paths were not as telegraphed as they should be for how fast that game is. So like there was a lot of trial and error, a lot of like I'm missing jumps because I was like, thinking I should jump in one place, but it's like, oh, no, actually, you have to jump here, 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 and then there, and I was getting mm-hmm. like frustrated with that kind of stuff. Um, so it was one of those things, like, maybe I just didn't invest enough of my time in it. But then watching that, it's like, that trailer looks sick, mm-hmm. but if there's anything you learn from Mirror's Edge, from friggin' Uncharted, Tomb Raider, whatever, it's like, the paths are very clear. Mm-hmm. Mirror's Edge, I think, was a master class in, like, how to interact with the environment. I think it was just really good, like, environmental, especially when you're moving fast. So if they can bump that up a little bit, I'm excited. I'd, I'd definitely play it. But. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of games to go, so yeah, I'm sorry, to keep sorry, it. Sorry, no, no, yeah. you're good, man. I, yeah. I love the combo, but I don't want this to be the, eight hours. No, the, <laughs> these, these first four games should not have had this long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. But speaking of which, so this is the first game I kind of caught a glance at Jeff's uh, sheet there. Whoa, so whoa. Uh, this definitely was something that caught my eye. I thought it was super awesome. Uh, Phantom Blade Zero? I guess. Yeah. Is it called Phantom Blade Zero? Yeah, with a dollar sign at the end. So zero no, slash <laughs> through it. Okay. Um, so this, there you go. <laughs> so um. He added the slash through it. Anyways, this caught my eye. The combat looked really slick and cool. I couldn't even like put my finger on like what, like it looked unique in a way. You, you know what I mean? Where it's like, I don't know what this looks like, but this is cool and it is grabbing my attention. It looks cool. Um, so I was kind of very intrigued by this. <laughs> is it my turn? Yeah, yes, no, your turn. Let's, let's this, see. this this is a, definitely one that caught my eye. Yeah. I think just to comment on on you, John, not on you of the game comments. Um, Tell the me about combat me. is I it is it did catch my eye. And one of my fears is I don't know how much of that combat is you're doing. Are you put inputting a combo? Yep. Is this something that you'll be doing once in a blue moon? Is this a quick time event? Is this? Yeah, did they just hide the quick time buttons yeah. off for the right. sake it of the looked, trailer? It looked like not yeah. in yeah. game, if that makes sense, because it was so crazy. So when I see, I, exactly, so when I see that type of combat in a trailer that isn't a CGI trailer, um, I do get a little bit concerned. I'm like, how are you pulling this off? Um, but I, 
I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. And I did do a little bit of research on this game off of the PlayStation blog. Um, this is a Chinese developed game, which is very mm. exciting to me. Okay. Um, mostly because when we think about a Chinese developed game that isn't under Tencent, when we think about a Korean developed game, some of these countries that aren't in mainstream games, um, they have a story to tell. And of course, China's going to censor the crap out of it. They can't talk about this, this, and this. But they have creative talent, and I want to see what they can bring to the table. Um, the developer is called Soul... Soul uh, well, let me rephrase that. The president of the company is named Soul Frame Liang. That is a badass name. That is his name, Soul wow. Frame. You're like um, born to be a video game <laughs> yes. developer. Yeah. Um, the studio is called S Games. And so what this game was born out of is this individual, individual Soul Frame, was in college and he was in college studying architecture. And in 2010, he made a, a he self, he made an indie game by himself and named it Rain Blood Tower of Death in 2010 <laughs> while he was going to college learning architecture. I think I just cut myself that's, off that's of that title. That's his son's name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and he, he did, he made this game to escape the stress of college. Uh, he finished college, he moved back to China, and he started his own studio, which is now called S Games, from the money he made from this indie game he made back in 2010. There has been different iterations of the game. It went to mobile, huge success over in China. We never heard about it because it didn't come to the States or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so now, this game, Phantom, Phantom Blade Zero, is a spirit, he called, this, these are his words, Spiritual rebirth of rain blood tower of death the way I, I saw it in 3D. So this is him going all out. Um, I'm I'm super pumped. You are an elite assassin serving an elusive organization called the Order, and you were framed for the murder of that organization's like president. Um, so you think of it like you're in a league of assassins and you killed the head assassin and now yeah whatever stem I didn't go into you know the entire story, but that's what I read off of the PlayStation blog. So we, we don't know awesome. if this is a Souls like yet. We, uh, yeah, we don't know. I, I didn't get that vibe. Neither I didn't did get I. That vibe that's, the, that's the make or break. I know when we were talking with Ryan last night, he was saying that it was like, it was almost jittery, like how, how mm. the movements were and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I don't, I don't disagree, but like if you, if you were to strip out all of the UI in Arkham games, you could almost be like, dude, that's, nuts where like Batman's literally like, taking down like six mm -hmm. guys at once and like dropping things and doing different stuff like that where like if it's anything like that type of combat or just like action based like almost like a Devil May Cry esque thing or some sort of like more forgiving parry system or something that you can like break a movement to like block something and attack and like something that's really responsive oh I'll play the heck out Same. of that I, I, that's what I want I don't want like and again you guys like Souls games so it's like if this is another one of those good on you. I get a little jealous because I love that setting and I'm like, I would, I wish I could play, uh, well, is Ghost of Tsushima actually coming to PC? Yeah. Do we have a no, date? I don't, I don't know yeah. a date. So it's something like that. Like I would love to play that, but even that's a little soulsy, isn't it? No. It's I not. think you would like, soul yeah. I, I think you would like, well, don't you have a PS5? Why don't you? Yeah, I do. I do. Listen, I should. Love I should. Ghost of Tsushima. I should. I should. And it is gorgeous. Yeah. Well, maybe I mean, like, maybe that's my. Uh, well, actually, no. My next one's going to be Ratchet Clank. But regardless, uh, that's the type of gameplay I'm looking for. So if I think that, I think almost Spider Man. I would love to have like a Spider Man combat yeah. system in here, where because in Spider Man, Miles and and Peter are doing these amazing things. You see the very fluid combat. Spider Man combat feels good. I, you know, great gaming sin, sin has have never played an Arkham game, but I would imagine it's somewhat like the Spider Man game. So that's what I'm hoping. I'm, I actually don't want this to be a Souls like. I, I'm already taken yeah. care of. I'm eating good with my Souls like. Well, the, I, I, I do like the. I need a stealth <clears throat> game because apparently Golem is not great. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> so <laughs> that's either gonna be Golem or, uh, or Zelda. Yeah, I, I just I need. Yeah. I really need Yikes. a stealth game. I hope That's you get one, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So that was that would caught my attention. Uh, moving on, we have Sword of the Sea, um, made by the people who made Journey. So I was thinking of Tyler when I was watching that. I never played Journey, but one of my favorite stories I ever heard was Tyler's experience with that. 
so cool. Yeah. So I'm sure you're, you know, excited about it. We didn't see a lot, but yeah. it's kind of, I guess, what you'd expect in a way where it's like it's, very similar style. So the thing with that is, is a little bit of a misconception because they're like, oh, for the people that did Abzu and Journey. And it's like, yeah, but like the people that did Abzu really weren't the people that did Journey. Like it, it, it's not like that game company. Like it's right. a little. I yeah, think they're Journey was affiliated. The, I think Journey was the big one though, because they did the first two, and then there was like a lion, and it's like and Journey. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like that they did that when they came out with Abzu, and Abzu wasn't bad, but yeah. it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not that. It's not the whole group. It's like because like if you're talking Journey, it's like they made Journey, they made Flower, and then they made the. Sky Children or whatever it was. Yeah. So it's like that's the three games they made. Don't like. Yeah, you can kind of say that. Oh, it's like Abzu, yeah, but that's like, I don't know, like Dead Death Stranding. It's like from the guy that made <laughs> Metal Gear Solid or whatever. Yeah. Like sure. I don't know. Anyway, I uh, being a Journey lover myself, um, I think it's my number six game of all time. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't really blown away by this one either. Mm. I. I mm. think I've seen a lot of games in that style of journey, um, and I don't know if it's like, oh, I've already had this experience. Like I'm not up for it again, because my experience with Journey was seriously. I. I think it was transformative, mm -hmm. and I don't. I just don't know. I. I, I look at these games and I'm like. I, I don't believe in You're it. You're trying to recapture it. Yeah, like I don't like, have that faith that this game is going to hit like the other ones. So I, I no, I, I passed on this one. Mm, yeah. Okay. I mean, like, look, I'll play it. I'm sure at some point. Yeah. But it's also one of those things. Like, I thought that the sand and journey looked better. Like I was looking <laughs> at it. And I'm just like, we. This is 20 years later, and and you didn't upgrade the, the sand particles. <laughs> I, anyway, I'm sorry. Go no, you're good. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one is the Talos Principle. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't write any notes for this, so I'm totally blanking on what this one I like the first one, one a lot. Did you play the first one? Mm -mm. What, can it's, you remind me what the trailer was? Uh, it's a puzzle game. So it's like you're in uh, like a, just like puzzle rooms and stuff. It's very uh, Portal-esque, but you have a lot of other props than just like your Portal gun. Mm -hmm. so What's the style of the game? Uh, first person. Like you're, it's like room to room. It's, think of it almost like you're in like a, like a maze. And it's just like pick up this block and put this okay. laser through, and gotcha. this will open this door to get you through here. To yeah. then pick up another block to yeah. put into this okay. lever. Um, the first one was good. I, like I, I thought it was, it was coming out around the same time as like The Witness and all these other ones. So it was like a lot of puzzle games all at once. But I thought it was serviceable for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and they did multiple iterations of it. I think it's in VR, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, you'll see like a cat, and they're like you, hold the cat. You, you know my love of puzzle sure, games. Sure, yeah. So. I, will will this like knock your socks off for like a puzzle? Like Portal, you have to play that game. Yep. This, I would never make you play this game. Yeah. Port like Portal is like the exception. Yeah, yeah. I I'm with you, John. I can't do puzzle games at all. Yeah. I, as soon as I see them, I blank. I'm like, mm, not Snooze, for me. Dude. Um, and and it's because I am so ungodly bad at puzzles. Any you can put any puzzle in front of me, and I I guarantee you, I'll take the longest in the room to figure it out. Um, I just don't have that strength. It makes you feel bad, and it's just like that. That puzzle games are very like you need to be by yourself. And yeah. when you finally get it, like I still think The Witness is one of the best feeling games ever. Whenever you get that aha moment, you do it, but you can't, you can't be around with someone else because someone yeah. else gets in there like, oh, I know. What if you do? It's like it ruins it. Yeah, right. no, agreed. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good, man. Um, so the next one on the list here is Neva, um, and this one was really interesting to me. Um, kind of like captured my attention just based off of like the premise. It's like a really good hook. Um, I don't know if it's the music. I really enjoyed the music in this one, or the style, or. Or the case may be, but I'm very curious about it. I don't know. Since people did Gris. Yes. Is that that one? Yeah. Gris was great. Uh, yeah. So I know, I think I saw you have a note on this. So I'm curious. <laughs> man, you eagle eye. I'm right here and I can't read that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So this one also captured my eye. Yeah. And I think the style is a big portion of it. Um, I also love the simplistic design of the main character. I thought that was a very well done main character. I thought the hook was great. You're seeing. Um, a character that we don't even know, but the character dies and she is very distraught. Um, I was almost more excited about this game before I looked into it. And this game is 
it's for all it's all consoles creators of gris um nomada studio studios uh, but this game is a lot about raising that little pet wolf that we see in the trailer um and seeing them grow together so I don't know what that journey looks like. I don't know if this is an action game. I don't know if this is a journey like where you're just exploring through the world with your with your new pet wolf. Um, but I am hyped for this game for some reason. Mm. I, I think I do have high expectations for it. And I actually made a note hoping that this will be my next journey because I am a sucker for a human and, and dog story. I love animals. I, you know, I don't know what it is. I, I just... I don't know. I love animals. If this is gonna make me, if this is gonna make me cry, I I just know it. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is probably a a day one buy unless it bombs in reviews for me. Mm, okay. Yeah. I, uh, Gris had a very unique watercolor aesthetic, and I thought mm. the art was phenomenal. It, I wouldn't call it a Metroidvania. Like there was some backtracking if you if you wanted to, but it was a pretty straightforward. Like yeah, just go through the world. Was it transformative? No, but I think that it was missing that exact thing where you have that other yeah. pairing of like another life to to connect to. So, no, yeah, yeah I mean I the first one, like the first one was good. So I'm sure this will be right, good. Uh, so it was actually funny. We get a complete 180 in terms of tone. <laughs> the next one is Cat Quest. <laughs> that uh, was freaking love. Have you played Cat Quest? Oh. Cat Quest is awesome. <laughs> really? Let me tell you. Oh my god! I was not expecting cow. that. Was Cat right Quest. I was ready to skip. But nope. Nope. <laughs> I love the title, dude. Cat Quest, awesome game. I don't per- think I played the, the second one. The second one they they include like I think there's like dogs and stuff. There's a whole other thing. Ooh. First Cat Quest was just that, that was a dumb like I'm just gonna play it on my like I don't even know is either on my Switch or like my freaking iPad and I sat there and played it like the entire like beat it in a sitting but or like a day but like it was just like all day I was just playing like it was amazing. Wow, <laughs> it was better than it had any right to be. <laughs> and now you take those adorable kitties and you put them in freaking pirates. That's that's, you. that's my that's game, you. man. All I, right. I wow. was I was devastated because I was like, this has to be like available now. And it's not till twenty twenty freaking four that that game is coming out. So I was super excited and got super bummed out. Oh, that's all I'm saying on Cat Quest. You should go play Cat Quest. I can't really top good. that. This is one that I did not anticipate talking about, <laughs> no, but I'm glad you did. Glad you did. Wow. Thirty second pitch, but Cat Quest no, is fantastic. I, that's awesome. It's um, better than it has any. It didn't look be. like good. It, lo- it looks like it's, it's a solid like I said, game. man. It it. Is it the best game in the world? Of course not. But like yeah. to to waste a day on that's awesome. You could do worse. Um, okay, so this is definitely one that I'm hoping we all snoozed on. Uh, Foam Stars, oh, PlayStation. What are they nah. doing? Yeah. What? How do you get away with world? that? That's such a dumb move, right? Oh my god! You're trying to beat Splatoon. Like you're you're done, so dude. Square Enix is just such a coin flip dude like they have the greatest shit and then they do this and it's it, like it what made in the me world? angry because even some of like the abilities and stuff were it literally ripped, looked like yeah. they just ripped it straight <laughs> out of like yeah. not even like a oh this is a cool different take on it it was like no like it's this orb in the sky shooting like candy cane rays at something I'm like that is literally what they do in splatoon yeah you see a paint roller go oh by. My yeah <laughs> dude Gosh. so uninspired like and it's yeah. flat it is flat like yeah. that's the thing is like at least splatoon has all these different levels and all these interactions and different things like we don't even i don't think they deserve to be talked about personally beyond that <laughs> i'm fine with that. anything yeah. on this i was shocked Nary. that they showed i was shocked they were doing it but i'm fine i thought on. i saw square enix i was like oh and then I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Dude, the I first hope, bubble I, I saw, I, I was like, wish geez. Nintendo would be like, hey, what, what, what you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know yeah. Nintendo is good to do that. I, oh, I'd tweet something out immediately. Be like, oh, nice trailer, guys. <laughs> yeah. By the way, it's Platoon Season Pass. On sale. That's, that's got to. <laughs> um, okay, anyway, so here's an interesting game. The Plucky Squire. Um, Plucky Squire. Yeah, so this one. Kind of caught my eye because it's like this. Uh, it starts out in this two D, like I don't know, cartoonish oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, RPG kind of thing. I was like, okay, this looks interesting. And then they pop out of the book, and it's like this. It takes two kind of feel where they're in this bedroom, and they're moving around. I thought it was pretty interesting. It looked good. Um, I'm very kind was of that curious not about on this the one. Xbox showcase. Was it? I don't think I don't it was. remember maybe, that one. Maybe it was State of Play, and I just I yeah yeah. I it, yeah. So. I was kind of interested in that. I don't know. 
this game, uh, as the trailer began, I was I was feeling it. I was feeling at the 2D in the book. I'm like, oh, dang, you know, okay, I, I can get down with this, even though this appears to be, um, you know, kind of that all age range field of, of game. Um, as soon as it went into the it takes two like 3D, I was, I was out. I was oh, like, I, okay. I, I, that is where I was. It lost me. I was like, ah, okay, not for me. But again, filling that that kid, maybe, I don't want to like, I don't want to call it a kid game, but just filling that you know playful slot of games that during the showcase made sense. Uh, not for me, but I'm sure it's for if, someone. I don't want to poo poo this game before it comes out, but if it can capture half of just how bonkers. It takes two was and the ups and downs that yeah. we had on that one. <laughs> or that and was, I still I don't yeah. think you play Tinykin. You play Tinykin? No. Tinykin phenomenal game. Yeah. Tinykin was amazing. And I, I to me, I think that that type of game where it's like you're in a small thing in a big world, like that is the game. Okay. So it has big shoes to fill if it if it can do that. Yeah, this will be another like let's see the reviews. Sure. Let's scope it out. Um Okay, so next up, this is was a snoozer for me, tear down. Uh, it just looks like a teardown's cool. Did you I play teardown yet? Teardown's cool. It's out. Yeah, you've played it. It's been out for a while. So, oh, okay. So teardown, the whole premise, and I don't think they did, the trailer didn't do a good job. Okay, maybe that. That's so it, yeah. the, the whole point of it is you go in to a building or whatever, and everything is destructible. Everything is all these little like um, it's like a Minecraft. What's it, what's mod. it called? Not pixels. Uh, voxels. Okay. So it, it's like that. But there's destructions and, and things everywhere, and you have to like look at, like, okay, here's the alarm, and here's all this stuff. You go and you case the joint, and you basically, and I don't know, like, I think they showed you could like spray paint like directions they and stuff. They did show that. And it's basically blow everything up, run in, grab the stuff, and get out of there in like the fastest time. So you're like creating your own pathways and different things like that. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna blow up this, making this up, like blow up this crane, this comes in, it breaks in the roof, I can run up it, jump down onto the car and get into the boat and drive away. So it's this like almost like speed run game. It's super cool. Is it like a, oh my, like this has been out for, ye- I'm gonna say years. Like I think it's been like pre-COVID almost, but it's like, it's neat, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think you did a better job selling me on the game than the trailer did. Trailer was uh, not good. I, I the trailer for me was why are there so many explosions? Like I think I saw a tree explode. I was like, sure <laughs> yeah. the tree exploded. <laughs> yeah. Um like yeah, it wasn't like a rocket hitting the tree and the rocket exploding, it was literally the tree exploding. I was like, wow, there's a lot of explosions. Like that's really all I took from it, but that sounds way more interesting than what I perceived the game to be. It's like how do you use the tree to then break into mm-hmm. the thing to get because you have to break in and out. So it's like Blow everything up, break it in, and like just, just to remember where you're going. That's when you put like the arrow and stuff of like look for the yellow because that's where I'm running out to. It's that could neat. that could be like a fun little thing we it, do. Yeah, it's yeah. like, and this is such a weird jump, but you know, uh, besiege mm-hmm. where you make your own little yep. thing, like the trial and error thing. Think of it almost like that, where it's just like a goofy indie thing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, I agree with Jeff there. Yeah, that was much. Better. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a bad. Tra- it was a bad good, trailer. No. Yeah. Um, okay, now we get into the meat here. Uh, what a trailer with, for this, too. I'm just so confused. Like, ants crawling on the ground. We're going through the jungle. Like, oh, what yeah. the fuck is this game? And then Metal Gear Solid, Snake Eater. Uh, I bet you don't have anything written for that. So, huh? <laughs> so clever how they did that. That was like kind of like, I know they've been talking about it, so everyone was expecting it, but I like how they did the trailer where it was like, and then looking, I watched it again and like, um, it, a snake comes out of the water. Yeah, that tries to eat the bird. There's like foreshadowing. Anyways, go for it. I let the Metal yeah, Gear yeah, Solid yeah, experts. I take so it away. I will say that in the world of remakes, um, this is one that I am very excited for. I hit my gaming maturity very late. I mat- <laughs> let, me, let me explain that. Uh-oh. Yeah, please do. <laughs> when. Snake Eater came out. I was very much old enough to play the game, but mentally I was not. I didn't understand all these systems. There was a lot to it. You're, you know, stab sna- stabbing snakes and eating them like literally to survive. This is a game that I really want to experience now I, because I think I have the mental. I don't want to say like fortitude, but I think I am will be much more willing to interact with the snake eater systems 
at a higher level than I was way back then um, because I did play it and it lost me very early on because I couldn't, I was like, why do I have to keep going to these menus? Uh, it, I didn't really get the nuance of the game. I didn't understand why it was special. So I'm really excited to give this one another go and understand why people really love this series outside of the bombastic bosses and, and characters that Kojima put up. Only concern, obviously, Kojima is not going to be involved in this. Um, this is a Konami um, developed and published game. Ko Kojima is not allowed to interact with them, so hopefully they don't drop the ball that much. I'm just hoping for at least half quality of what the Resident Evil 4 remake was, and I'll be happy. I don't think half quality is enough. I don't, like, they've already remastered it. Which that's the other thing is they they come out with one two and three and they, mm -hmm. they have a remaster which has been out on Xbox for a decade now <laughs> like it's been forever. So the thing that I'm worried about, and I think looking at the ants and all that stuff, I think is a perfect example of like, could you imagine that trailer if Kojima was still part of it? How would, mu how yeah. much better that would have been? Oh, where it's like you didn't like I, the trailer. I feel like they were trying. Uh, they I were see. trying too hard. Okay. where it was like. You were you were doing all of it, and I get what they were doing, but it's like it it just seems hollow to me. And this is me being like pessimist because I I'm a firm believer. Like I think Halo was fine. I think Gears of War was fine. Well, whenever like the people left, right, and like they did their own things and stuff. And I think like franchises can can still go on without their like Papa Bear type of thing. Kojima is one of these things, like these people that like. That game is so bonkers and so weird and wild, and the systems were so good because he pushed for it. And I think that people aren't going to push in the same way, or you're going to get, an, I, I think they need to put a named person on it of just like, okay, here's Kojima's equal. Like, good luck. Because, and, and this is, this, you were mentioning Resident Evil 4. Do you think that, and I think Resident Evil 4, the remake, was a, a good game? Like, it was, it was good. But if you look at Resident Evil 5 and 6, there was no growth there. They didn't do anything good. I think they, they dropped the ball multiple times. So it was like Resident Evil 4 was about as good as they got mm -hmm. with the Resident Evil series. Putting aside the first person stuff, I feel like that's almost like a different, not genre, but like a different thing, right? Sure. So Resident Evil 4 was the last good Resident Evil third person game. The thing with Metal Gear, you had plenty of other I would argue better Metal Gear games. Mm -hmm. I think I think Phantom Pain is the best video game of that thing. So like, if it's not going to be playing like Phantom Pain, if it's not going to have the systems like Phantom Pain and all that stuff, I don't know you can get there. And maybe people didn't like Phantom Pain as much. Like right, like maybe they maybe they wanted a more concise story, or maybe they wanted like we'll see. But I, that's my thought on it. Is like they have a big shoes to fill. I don't. I don't know if they can if they can do that. I don't know if like playing that now. I I, I went through it all, and we had to do it for the last podcast. I did not enjoy. It. I did it. I beat it. Didn't didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> so like my only hope is that they already have the blueprint. My hope that Kojima's going away, like them him not being there is that's okay. They already know what the core game is. They huge graphical upgrade, you know, maybe tweak the, the, the gameplay just a little bit like they did with Resident Evil 4, just minute changes and spit it out. You know, don't try. Definitely do not try to do something creative that is not already in that game because but that, that's what I'm worried about. I, you know, what I mean, I, yeah, like, I, I think that they would be so I, I don't think there's any way that they don't know that they can't do that, but they have to. Is what I'm saying. Like I'm saying, though, no, like uh, they, they, I, they have to take creative liberties and freedoms because the game itself is old. Like you can't rip it out and be like, okay, here's here's the mm -hmm. thing, right? So like even Resident Evil did very like specific. Okay, it's a different time of day, but it will get to where you remember it by the yeah. time you're getting to a certain point, different things like that, and everything was very deliberate and they can point to all that stuff. And I'm not saying that Snake Eater can't get to that point, but like Snake Eater, in the grand scheme of things, was a triumph when it came out and like all the different systems and like what, he's standing under a waterfall and sitting in Manhattan, like, oh, it's crazy, it's interactive. But like that kind of stuff, like you're not gonna get the whole like memory card thing. You're not gonna get the move your clock forward a year and kill the guy before you have to take on the sniper and stuff like that. So like, how do you get around that kind of stuff? How do you 
reinvent these battles, these characters, these things, you have to. Otherwise, it's literally a remaster, right? If they just pick it up and just make it look better, it's not going to be good enough. So you need to improve it. Do they have that ability? And it's like, keep in mind, these are the people who are like, Pachinko. Ah? I was about to say, ah? I, <laughs> like, I, you actually have brought me down. I don't think they have any chance of doing that. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to bring you down. It's just like, that's my worry. No, it's like, but what I, can you do? I think I agree with you. Like, the way that you just explained it, I'm like, oh, it just has to be half as good as, did they just have to do half as good a job as, you know, what they did with Resident Evil 4? No, now I realize how wrong that statement was after hearing it. You have to do better. You. Yeah, the, I don't think they can do it. Like, did, Re- I'm Resident off Evil was the best thing. <laughs> well, now I feel bad. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I would love to see that triumph. I would. But that game is bonkers. And it was one dude. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I'm not saying that other people didn't contribute and different things like that, but like, is this guy knowing what he wants to do and his mind is on another level because he is just a wild? <laughs> yeah, I guess the only thing I would say is we live in like the age of these remakes and they have largely delivered. Like with these huge yeah. IPs, I think. The creators understand how cherished these things are, and they understand the gravity. Um, from what I've seen, I mean, we we talk about Resident Evil, even Resident Evil Two, right? Like, which in my mind kind of almost kicked this kind of stuff off. I know it wasn't obviously the first one, but like Final Fantasy VII comes to mind. I think they re- like you could just tell how careful they were. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy VII is a, a different. Final Fantasy VII, honestly, I think is the closest parallel to Snake Eater. Yeah. In, in that you would think you it was impossible. A, you you would think, hey, maybe let's redo the first Metal Gear. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, and like a let's dip our toe in. <laughs> not yeah. the, the most beloved game yeah. in this series yeah. after we said that we're not into video games anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Because man. like you look at someone like Kyle. Yeah. They dude, the Final Fantasy VII fans are so hardcore. And I think, like you know, you you know, you have people who didn't like some things about the game, but I think largely it was a big success. Mm-hmm. And to me, you would think initially, like, oh, this is going to be impossible. How do you recapture this in this day and age while still changing things and like up? It's not even turn based anymore, right? So I don't know. But the thing I is, I think there's hope. Look how much better Metal Gear Four was yeah. than Three. Yeah. Uh, in certain ways, other ways maybe it was, wasn't so much. Look how much better Phantom Pain was, gameplay wise, just like movement and and just a modern video game. Like, it just kept getting better. Where yeah, but like, they did that for Resident. They started with Resident Evil Two, mm-hmm. where Resident Evil Four was a better game overall, like the gameplay and yeah, you know what I mean, the mechanics. If that's like but where it was you're com- going, it was completely different. What I'm saying is like. They they kept improving. I see. Uh, they kept improving uh, Metal Gear. So like Metal Gear Three wasn't the pinnacle of the series, yeah. Gameplay wise, yeah. maybe story wise, however you want to argue it. Yeah. Um, I think five gameplay wise was the pinnacle. So like they've already improved the systems. They've already improved the the combat, the gameplay, the stealth, the every every aspect of it, except maybe the story and the <laughs> voice acting. Uh, <laughs> so like you have that where like Resident Evil Four. I think was the pinnacle of that. And then five was like, what's going on? And then six is like, Oh God. <laughs> like, so yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, gotcha. I can't wait to see it. I, I, it's a must play. It's a must play. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right. Uh, okay. So the next one is towers of Agashba. Oh uh, yeah. Ag- Agashba. Agashba. Remember, remember what you have a note A G H A S B A. I don't. I think it was the one where they're flying around or some shit. It was so forgettable, dude. Uh, go to the next one. I can. Look Are you there. sure? Was it Tower of Fantasy? No, that's that's. Oh, is that later. way down there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Tower. I'm sorry, guys. I dropped the ball on that one. I, I that was such a snooze for me. I didn't. Even, I, I don't even remember. Yeah, that exactly. One. I think they were like flying around. How do you spell it? Oh, never mind. I got it. A G H A S B A. How do you pronounce that? Agashba. Agashba. I think I just fell asleep during this. Right? <laughs> <It's> like so <laughs> forgettable. I'm just moving to the next one. Sorry, just too much time it just looks like Zelda. Yeah. And it's not better than Zelda. So. Oh, this is you build you build your town and stuff. Uh this yeah, city builder. Yeah, I'd be, I I I 
screw around with these. I could see this appealing to people and just yeah. not, okay. my, not my type yeah. of yeah. game. Yeah, me either. All right, next one, Final Fantasy 16. So we see another trailer. I know, Jeff, you turned this one off. I did not watch this. I've spoilers. seen enough of the game to yeah. be so stoked for it later yeah. in, in June. I don't need. To, I don't want to see any more of it. You know, I don't want them to make the death loop uh, mistake of just constantly shoving like previews down your throat. So I, I, I just hit my off button because I'm. This is a definitely a must play for me. Um, I know you guys have a little bit of concern for it, uh, and you know that's valid, but. Um, I just didn't need to watch it. I, I'm already hyped on this game. They always do that too, where they show way too much. Yeah, <laughs> every Final Fantasy. I don't know why they do that every single time. I, I thought like it was clockwork. A, I thought it was a low quality video that they were showing. I See, just I, was, I thought everything looked bad. I, I was watching on my phone. I think it's gonna be an amazing looking game because I I think 15 looked better. I don't I don't know. I maybe I'm just misremembering. I guarantee you this one will look better I, than 15. And weirdly enough, I really wanted fa- Final Fantasy to go back to the medieval like you know like fantasy esque mm-hmm. type thing mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's like Octopath scratched that itch for me but I'm like I kind of like the modern I kind of <laughs> oh, like 15 okay. like 15 was yeah, pretty you good you are a 15 fan and I know yeah. I know Kyle would cringe hearing that because I never finished it but like I was yeah. like I enj- for what I played of 15 didn't even get to the good part <laughs> uh, well I, I thought there were plenty of good parts up to that point like yeah. I 15 was cool yeah. like 15 I, I like that a lot so yeah. More power to them. I mean, hopefully they do good. I know they were talking about like, should we keep numbering the? I think they should. Yeah, oh, I think definitely. there's like they just keep going. Yeah. But uh, I'm super stoked for this. I I think this is cool. And this was like a really cool trailer because I know a lot of the complaints were like, dude, who's in your party? Mm-hmm. Like, because they were just showing the main character, and then this one was like a showcase of like, okay, here's some of the surrounding characters. Ooh. Three other white guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a chick though. Oh, is there? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, that was one of oh, my sorry. biggest. I didn't want to no, no, no. no I, don't, I don't mean that because of a spoiler. I just my main concern was that like, where's the party? The party members are one of my favorite parts about Final Fantasy is the diverse cast, and that's why I really fell off of 15 because I'm like, I don't. 15 wa- makes it work though. I believe I, you. Yeah. I was on for 15. I was on that train. I was getting through it, and I was on the I was on the platinum grind. I was doing everything in that game, but eventually, I was like, "I'm just tired of these characters." Like, I for me, I want you know my alien, you know, lion guy. I want you know Vivi. I want you know, these icons that you think of. Um, I can't even remember any of the names from of the of the guys he from means 15. 13. What he means 13? I think is his lion guy. No, he's talking no, about 10. No, lines from 10. 10. I can't remember the oh, line geez. guy. 10 and 9 he was referencing. It starts with a K, right? I don't, I don't remember. remember his name either. <laughs> but like the Lou I just remember Walker. Walker was the Waka one. Waka. Uh, you know, even, you know, Final Fantasy VII's awesome cast. So Final we think 10's Final... the best? Can we uh, just can we call it? I, I, best, I need to play 6 first. I would play 10 a long time. Though, I, so maybe. 10 is... Ten's in the conversation, obviously. Ten or seven remake for me. Okay, I love seven remake. All right, I'm gonna move on because we got we're like halfway, by the way. So. All right, we'll get a speed round. <laughs> uh, we're an hour back from the last episode. <laughs> three, the three of us were on. So. <laughs> What's that? Our last oh, episode our last three, three hours. hours long. Yeah, yeah. So we, we won't get that hard. No, Sorry. no, I think it's great conversation. <laughs> um, that sounds super sarcastic. I did not mean it. <laughs> no, <that>. no, it's <laughs> fine. It's, it's it's great. Uh, next on the list is Alan Wake two. I could not. I care. don't give a shit about this either. I know. Oh, 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 here we go. This Jeff. is really very You got quick. the floor. You got the floor. Coming out Octo- October 17th, 2023, this year. Remedy Games, PS5, Xbox, PC. So this is a multi console game. Yep. Or it's basically everywhere except for the Switch. Makes sense. Um, the only note that I have on this is I don't do horror. I'm, I, I'm a wimp. I, I, I don't enjoy horror movies or games. However, I just finished eight, or five, I just finished Resident Evil eight. Uh, I finished Resident Evil four. My confidence is kind of built up. I'm kind of feeling the horror. Uh-oh. Like I'm kind of dipping my toes in. This game looks a little too scary for me. I don't know how scary the Alan Wake games are, but because of my new confidence, I I'm considering this one. That's that's about it. I I don't know. I think I never played them, but my understanding is it's more like a thriller esque, yes. not like just straight horror. Maybe I'm totally you get, wrong. You get some tense moments. That's like, the like vibe it, I got. It's like you know how like if like a uh, like a necro 
Morph. Flangy or Necromorph, mm-hmm. whatever is coming at you, and you're just like, Flangy. Uh, it's, Flangy. Kind of, it's kind of the same thing. Like if you hit <laughs> yeah. him with the light and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I I know people are excited for that. So that was that was cool. Um, I I laughed because I. I always thought that Alan Wake 2 was already out, but it's just American Nightmare. It's like a, like a <laughs> DLC. I gotcha. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, okay, the next one on the list is Assassin's Creed Mirage. Wow. So snooze on this. And this is from a guy, I used to love Assassin's Creed, but they, I don't, I can't even think of another series they have beat to death more than Assassin's Creed. Play Odyssey. I think that the Assassin's Creed, what's so interesting is, the people that we're speaking to, the conversations we're having is a very small percentage of the gaming community, right? Like yeah. It, it, these conversations are, a lot of households, they don't even happen. Uh, a lot of households, oh, there's a new Assassin's Creed, that's a must-buy for this household. Or, you know, yeah. It, I think people are buying it. it. You know, this is resonating with people. When I saw this trailer, I literally thought it was, I didn't even realize it was the new one. I thought it was a remake of Assassin's Creed 1 or 2 just because the setting was so similar. Yeah. But this this one's not really a hit for me either. Well, it's I it's going in well. from uh, Origin, right? Like it's like a spinoff of, is of it? that. I, I think it's, I think I it's that so. character. It looks that setting, yeah. like classic Assassin's Creed, which I guess is supposed to get people excited. Yeah. Just like even the combat that they showed was like very old school, just smash X until you kill them all, which I loved, but... Yeah, I don't know, dude. I am so until they until they go full stealth on Assassin's Creed, like the first game. I'm not saying the first game was perfect by any stretch, but if until they go that route, yeah, Odyssey is so good. <laughs> okay, it's, it's the best. I'm I'm about to burn hours on Odyssey. Oh my god, I know. Fuck. I'm I'm about to. I need to start just agreeing with you so you don't ruin <laughs> my life. Um, okay, next one on the list is Revenant Hill, um, which is the one about a cat kind of moving. Through this thing, I was kind of confused by this. I don't know if this mm. is like a kind of a stray thing where you're living, you know, you're seeing this world through the eyes of like a cat. Or, it is not uh, okay, um, Jeff. I don't please have, enlighten I me. I don't have notes for this. Okay, one. I was making a quick. I re- this is from a developer of a story-driven game. I can't remember what they did in the past, but it had a very similar art style. The cat, like all the animals. Yeah, it was like something in the woods. Night, maybe night in the woods, maybe it was night like in the woods. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are excited about this game and talking about it. This is like one of the, I think this is one of those like feel good indie stylized games. You probably go through a short narrative. Um, didn't really make my list, but I thought it, you know it, it looked cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one is Grand Blue Fantasy, uh, which is my understanding is degeneracy anime time. Is my right on this? <laughs> You, no? lo- you, you guys know, you don't know Blue, notes? Yeah, no, I, I like this one. You like this, this one's one? on my list. This is like people are really excited for this, right? Yeah. Um, but is it, is it like gotcha game style? No. Okay, no, no, no. so it's not like Single Genshin player Impact. experience. Okay, oh, okay. Take it uh, away, Jeff. Coming out this winter, PS5, PS4, and PC. Developer side games. Um, I'm excited for this game because this more closely resembles what I want from a Final Fantasy game with the diverse characters. Sure. Um, they look nowhere near as complex as Final Fantasy <laughs> characters. It looks really dumbed down. Yeah. Um, but this is, I think I'm pretty on board with this game as long as it scores a seven or above. Um, it looks like it's going to itch um, a JRPG type of grind that I go for every once in a while. Uh, my only concern is that if it falls into like the Tales of Arise tropes, like Tales of Destiny, one of my favorite games of all time, I have not resonated with the Tales game in a long time. The last one that came out was Tales of Arise. I just gave it a perfect 10 out of 10. I was going to say, Arise did well critically, it was, right? Yeah, it was the most yeah. trash game I ever played in my life. Oh. I, I could not believe how bad this game was, and I just gave it a 10. I was mind blown. Um, I don't want it to fall into the bad narrative um, trappings of what Tales of, of Arise did. So I'm hoping this is a... Diamond in the rough, just you know, seven of uh, and above that I can kind of spend some time with, enjoy, and 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 be happy. Cool. I wish you all the best. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll dip my. T- I like I like getting a little degenerate sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I might take on this so wrong, but that's just like <laughs> what I got out of this. Okay, speaking of an interesting here, um, I've never played a Street Fighter game in my entire life. And Street Fighter Six makes me want to play a Street Fighter game. Just go dude. play the demo, and I feel like you'll be satiated dude, and you'll be fine. What a smart trailer too, because it was like 
they're going for this like single player thing where it's like a, a big thing that they've been showcasing is like you make your own character and you get to interact with all these legendary characters like characters that i know even though i've never played the games sounds really cool i don't know yeah uh pro, pro, uh <sighs> I miss Final Final Fantasy. Jesus, I miss Street Fighter Two. I, for me, if this would be one of the fighting games that I would purchase, I cannot purchase a fighting game. I am too competitive. I would be online. I'd be grinding. I cannot let that time take over my life. <laughs> um, and if I did, it would probably be more of like a Guilty Gear Strive or something um, from that studio. Uh, so this game, I wish it all the best. I think it looks awesome. I want to play it, but I, I cannot give it my time. Interesting. Did not expect that. Tekken 8. Tekken 8 does, is not getting me as hyped as this. No, I mean, it's fine. It's okay. Te- Tekken 8. Although I do, I do envy your like, that's what I miss. I just love being part of a community, like knowing the lore and then something comes out and you're like, oh my God, it's that guy who got thrown into a volcano five times. <laughs> He's love that alive. guy. He's still alive. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I always just want to be on the end mm-hmm. with everyone yeah. else. So I'm kind of getting hyped. That might go away real quick. You might be exactly telling right, you, download the demo yeah, and I feel like you'll be fine. Yeah, you're probably right. Like I played, I played the demo for like five minutes and I was like, I'm not even going <laughs> to keep it installed <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, okay, next one is Ultros, which is kind of like a side scroller. It was kind of like psychedelic, very colorful. Was it like cyberpunky? Would you describe it that way? It was like I don't. Are you guys remembering this one? Yeah, this is looks. It's really a plat- good. platformer really good. kind of thing. How do you spell it? Uh, Ultros. U L T R O S. Uh, coming to PS4, PS5, PC, 2024. Swedish developer hmm. Hoduk Hodoku. Hadouk. Did I describe that right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It, it, go ahead, Jeff. It got me like a dead dead cells vibe. Yeah. So this game looks super appealing to me. This looks freaking rad. I love the. This is you know we talk about art style style you know all the time. This is taking it to a really funky place and I love it. Um, psychedelic. I have seen everyone describing it that way and it's justified. It looks so cool. Uh, highly encourage you look it up. Uh, Metro Metroid Metroidvania, where you fight aliens and ten tend to plants, set in a set in a cosmic uterus. What? That's what Rock Paper Shotgun reported. So I'm sure, it's not a autocorrect for a universe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> um, but it it looks interesting. There's different flora that you tend to that give you different effects in the game on top of building out this character with I assume stat blocks and things like that. This is right up my alley. Probably this is a definite buy for me. Mm. If it's responsive, uh-huh. if it has the dead cells, if it has an Ori in the blind forest, if it has Hades, that type of uh, quick movement where it's not overly animated Mm -hmm. um and it's responsive that i'm in otherwise it gets too i get bogged down with like the it it doesn't feel right to me Mm -hmm. so that'll be the make or break for me okay cool uh next one tower fantasy which jeff talked about i again didn't put notes on so i'm totally blanking on this one so did, did you have notes on this i played it okay don't play it okay what what's the 30 second pitch of it um, I had no clue that this is just Genshin. Um, uh, okay. This is just Genshin. This is oh, why okay. I did not write it. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I didn't. I thought it was a single player experience. I didn't even know it was out on PC already. I, I downloaded it, uh, played it on stream, and it was horrendous. It was a terrible Oof. experience. Um, I just ran around and basically talked to people and followed the prompts and a but but a bunch of currencies went into my bag and they were like oh but if you spend real life money you can get this and I was like nope yep Calm. um so that don't play it all right perfect uh next one this is a big one Dragon's Dogma two I've never played is it? it Jeff oh. was very excited so I'm gonna okay. give him the floor right. I've never played them I thought this looked better but than uh, sell us on it Jeff sixteen I don't think I can sell you on it because I never played the first one. Okay, but Great this start. this I know right. <laughs> um, this for me was probably game of the show for me. Um, coming to PS5, Xbox, and PC. We don't have a date yet. I'm expecting sometime late next year or maybe even 2025, um, with how little we've seen of it so far. Um, by Capcom, so Monster Hunter. I have really high confidence in the combat of this. I think it's going to be great. I think Capcom is somebody who does 
bombastic fights very well because of their experience with the Monster Hunter series. So I have really high hopes for it. I love the high fantasy. I love that you could be a wizard, an archer, uh, you know, your big bruiser. Like I, I, I'm always the guy with the big sword. I love being the guy with the big sword. So can't yeah, wait to do yeah, that. Yeah. Um, for me, this is <laughs> this is what I, I, this is like a Witcher experience that isn't the Witcher, and I'm craving that. So very excited for it. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, next one is Five Nights at Freddy's. I know, Tyler, you're really excited for this. Nope. I respect the heck out of it. I don't. <laughs> Fuck that. I do. Dude, any, you any, do? anything that popular to make that bank. I don't get it, dude. I feel like such a boomer when it comes to that. I think it's brilliant. People I, love they get so I into am the lore. Horrified of the game. I will never play the game. Yeah. My cousin has been playing Five Night at Five Night at Freddy's games since he was in sixth grade. Yeah. It is a huge thing oh, with, yeah. with oh. new gamers. You, you can get I'm, yeah. the kids like if you can get that like it's like you get that Fortnite crowd. Yep. Like you get the it's the it's You're cool and and yeah. if you, grandma knows what Five Nights at Freddy's is. Yeah. You hit it yeah. big, man. I remember I used to work at this like place where there's like this kid's place, like a fun, it's called fun slides, but it's like a jump zone or esque. Right. Sure. Anyways, you would have people have a birthday party themed with five nights of Freddy's. That's when you know it's made it right. Like that's mm-hmm. crazy. Um, just, and I, and I respect that terrified. Yeah. Kids are crazy, dude. They, they're ballsy. So yeah, but it's the lore thing. It reminds me of like call of duty zombies. So like my little mm. brother is super into zombies and through him, I learned that there's this whole lore. It's so good, and it gets cr- it's insane, dude. Me and uh, and Chris, uh, like way back in college, would spend hours, yeah, like keeping one zombie alive so we could just look at every nook and cranny of every level. Oh, it's so fun! Yeah, that's so, so awesome. good. <laughs> so, so, anyways, good. I kind maybe I envy that. Maybe I want to be like. I, I there's like I like being a lore, lore nerd. Yeah, no, like it's, it's like I, yeah. It's like I was I would e- listen to him theorize <laughs> with his friends and just be lost. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, um, next one we get into the VR segment, which I totally I don't don't care. care so. I care about one thing. Okay, so Queen, Resident Evil Four, baby. Oh, uh, okay. No, mm. Resident Evil Four actually pisses me off a little bit. Oh, okay. Because I own Resident Evil Four. Yeah, and it's like, oh, we're gonna to buy it again. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not buying that again. I thought it was already out. I saw that. I was like, wait, I thought this already <laughs> shipped with. Yeah, like in the development. Game. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Um, okay, Arizona Sunset Two. That's actually kind of cool. Um, I will say that, that looks dramatically. If that was actual gameplay footage, which it seemed like it was, it wasn't. No, I think, I think some of it cheeseburger. Was, I don't know. No, not part of it. They tried to make it look. Like gameplay where he's like messing with the limbs and stuff, yeah. But it was all CG. Are you sure? Yes, because you can do that in the game. I understand that. Uh, okay, but it was trust uh, well me. Then, that's why I didn't then, like the trailer because it looked really weird. Then maybe maybe I'm less inclined to. It. I thought that was all gameplay. I'm like, this looks really looks dramatically yeah. better than the first game. I I do not think I'm wrong. The first that. game was good. I hate the humor, but yeah, it it's, still is better than whatever that Soviet game we just played. Oh. This year it was. <laughs> yeah. Atomic Heart. Atomic Heart. Yeah. Oh, what a Soviet boring game. <laughs> yeah, Soviet game. Yeah. Anything on that, Jeff? Anything no, on any of these? Uh, it did not hit with me. Okay. The zombies me for me are so. Um, and I, I, you're going to troll oh, me for please. this. Outside of The Last of Us, zombies are like. No, The Last of Us is. Look, I respect it. But I this, this, game, Last of Us this game was cool because it, it forced you to pick and choose how you were going to take on stuff. So, like, yeah. you could have two guns. You're playing, like, throughout the entire thing with two guns and stuff. And all of a sudden, you have to go into this, like, mine shaft. And now one of your hands has to be holding mm-hmm. a light. Mm. And it completely changes your play Cre- style. Yeah, and creative. it's like, ah, that's yeah. actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's really good. All right, so I'm going to run through these yeah. uh, and stop me if you have thoughts. So Crossfire, Sierra Squad shooter like who cares at some point so my only thing with that is at some point i understand you have your call of duties i have your thing but like you're getting into this weird territory where it's like you are actively moving and making the motions to kill somebody and that gets weird to me and Mm. i don't i don't know why that's the line for me Mm. but that feels bad I disagree because I hearken back to my arcade days where sure. I played Time Crisis and I. No, play. no, I mean like other people. That's fair. Like you, like well, you're, you're in a situation where it's like you're still pointing at the screen, though. 
you're not pointing Maybe. at someone else, I guess. You know you what I mean? It's not be... like laser tag or something where you're... So, like, by that logic, laser tag's horrible because that's the same thing. Or paintball or airsoft. Well, no, because there's a difference. Airsoft's there's a like, difference. If it was paintball, it would be different. Like, if it's... Airsoft is literally, like, modeled yeah, yeah. after the and gun. I, I don't, so, you, I don't you're not about airsoft. that. I, I'm, I'm I know just you saying. don't love it, but do you disagree with the premise? I disagree with the fact that if you're shooting somebody okay. in a game and you're actually seeing blood or gore, or whatever, and to be fair, they didn't show any of that in the trailer, at least not to my knowledge, like, then it's just, it's different. Like, we're crossing over into this threat because it's only going to get better, right? Right. So that's when you can start making these things where, like, you're actively, like, killing another like another person that you are seeing that's interacting where if you both wanted to you both could be waving at each other and then pulling a trigger and literally shooting them in the head and watching their head explode is where we're going to and i don't know why that that's like where my mind's at where it's like okay maybe that's the line or maybe that's where i personally feel have your game i'm not saying that shouldn't be made i'm just saying like that's maybe where i'm like i don't feel good about this if it's paintball, if you're shooting something else, that's a different thing. There are plenty of games where you're like throwing darts at each other and doing different things, and it's like a fun, like gamey thing. But when you're talking like you're in a warehouse, this is a tactical thing. Stuff that like my cousin would love, Nate would love. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't have that. That's where I lose like the quote unquote fun gun like the the game part of it. And now it's like you're doing drills and, and stuff that I can't okay. connect to. I think it harkens back to the Grand Theft Auto 5 torture scene and mm -hmm. how much controversy came from that because that that's not meant to be a fun scene. That's meant to invoke a reaction, just like you said. You An, an, an emotion and a feeling is invoked by making that action. Um, and sometimes it doesn't feel good. And um, But now it, instead of pressing a button, right. you're literally holding it and it's stabbing it. It's a step further. Yeah. 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 That's, so, that's you know, rough. like you said, it's... It, the product can exist. It's um, it's invoking something as a response, and I don't think it would be a good one f for me either to experience. I, this one would is a is a pass for me. Yeah, for similar reasons. And I'm not on a high horse. Like I don't want to no, make it sound no. like that. It's I, just like I respect that you can literally Call of Duty cannot train you to go shoot up something. VR. Well, I'm not saying it can now. You can aim in VR. You can practice things in VR. You can, like, it starts getting a little weird. I feel you. So that's, I don't know. I anyway. don't know if I share the, that sentiment, but I respect what you're saying. And Again, I'm I looking more future-esque. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, 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 get, I get that, yeah. Um, okay, so the next one was uh, Synapse, kind of this weird thing where you go into someone's brain and then, I probably, his, I probably zoomed, zoomed yeah, I don't on that one. I will say with this one, if I could real quick, and I know we're getting a little bit over here, the voice acting in this trailer was fantastic. I might need to go Out watch it again because I don't remember. Nowhere. Gotta, uh, uh, Jennifer Hale is, is in this, and then the dude who's the villain, amazing voice acting in this game that I'm never going to play in my <laughs> life. So that was just kind of strange for me. Is this something that was already out and it's just coming again? And I don't think so, but... My oh yeah, 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 yeah. Is it was it out? No, this. Okay. this so they they showed this before though. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm actually. That Jennifer would be, Hale's that would be in cool. this. Did they get that? Oh, right? I, I don't know. Maybe. I thought I heard Commander Shepard. So. Oh, probably. Um. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. I just want to point that cool. out. Uh, and then what Tyler's excited for? Beat Saber Queen. Ruined everyone's uh, stream. If you're streaming this, totally ruined. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I. So as somebody who owns every single piece of downloadable content for Beat Saber, and when yeah. I say every piece, I mean every single piece, they need to have something that transfers your purchase between things. I understand why and all the licensing and rock, or, uh, rock Band and everything ran into this a million times over, but like, I'm never going to... like This could look way better than all the other... I'm never going to switch over to this because I'm so invested in my quest. That's why I'm not even playing on like Steam or anything because like all my purchases are on my quest. So until they have some sort of like movement there, yeah, it. I want to get excited, but I can't because it doesn't. Uh, like I, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna. Sucks. Yeah. No thoughts on this. I have never played Beat Saber in my entire Man, life. So good. I it appeals to me greatly. Um, I think I'm being stingy and trying to vote with my wallet on VR where. 
I don't want to support it until I see that vision of what I want VR to be. And I haven't seen any game that deliver on that vision or maybe Half-Life Alex. Like if I had VR, I would only have Half-Life Alex and probably Beat Saber. Um, if I had VR, I would be into it. I love Queen. Um, I was rocking, but it's just not really in my deck of cards right now. It's still a novelty right now. I yeah. Everyone I know who gets VR, excited at first, fun at first, then they just... The controllers just suck. There. It just sits there for everyone I know who has it. So it's like, yeah, I think Half-Life, Half-Life Alex is the only, like... Must play. Must Yeah, exactly. So See, I think Beats... Like, you're you're right, and there yeah, are plenty of other here, things too. Like there's there Pistol too. Whip, and there yeah. I could give you a whole list of like these are. But like, but like, half like Half Life Alex. I don't know why I can't get that out. Is like the only one where it's like, okay, this is the potential. Like, I can see the well, future. Let me, a let me bit put it this here. way: the list of you have to play these games was the same eight years ago. Whenever yeah. Steam came out <laughs> with like, I'm not even sure. joking. No, like, no, yeah. like ninety percent of them are are identical. I'm yeah. not saying other games have an iterator. Their sequels aren't out, but it's like. The same freaking thing, yeah. Um, and the fact that they raised the price a hundred dollars for like inflation or whatever. But like, all I want are the Quest One's controls, like the the controllers because they're just better. They feel better. They're weighted more properly, and put it on the the Quest Two headset, and it won't do it. So like the Quest Two, I just don't play because it's so uncomfortable to play because I I spent however many years getting good at the first ones. I feel like a Clots now, and I hate it. I got you. But I'm going to play some Queen, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and I can pay the money. Last thing I'll say on that, Queen might be the greatest band of all time. So I'm just going to put that out there. Fall Out Boy is also on there. And Panic at the Disco. Okay. Not as good as Queen, but yeah. I think Billie Eilish is on there, so too. Good. Anyways. uh Mar- all the new ones. Yeah. Dude, Ma- Marathon. What was the... Okay, well, we can go to Marathon. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Are you sure? Yeah. What's the one that I always want to rank her top songs? Adele. Adele. Adele needs to be on Beat Saber, and then, <laughs> and then we're good. She's <laughs> then, too expensive, bro. You can't do it. <laughs> um, Jeff, I'm going to turn this one to you. I know that you were talking about this last night. Let's hear your thoughts on Marathon. Um, I'm going to start off. Uh, really odd placement of where they put this trailer in the showcase. Uh, we'll get to that after we talk about the next game. But Marathon, developed by Bungie. It's their first it's their first new project in over a decade. Very excited for the Bungie team. I don't think anything... I, I think they needed it. I think the Bungie team needed a change. They needed that injection of passion into their arm. And this is it. This game came out in 1994 before John was born on iOS. Um, this is a PvP extraction shooter. Uh, I don't know how, but they have my attention so like I want this game now so bad uh Halo 3 for me was my like epitome of shooters I love Halo I feel like it's balanced it's the time to kill for me is like perfect in Halo I want to see what they're doing with this extraction premise um I thought the trailer was super stylish when you see the Bungie name on the wall I flipped out um I thought it was Marathon right not right from the get-go but as soon as we saw the characters and they went down like oh this is marathon um i think it looks absolutely awesome even though we haven't seen it i i have full confidence in the bungee team and, and their ability to make this game um i can't wait to see more i wonder if if they feel like man i wish we had another shot at halo mm. with everything that halo's been and everything and like you're looking at your marathon you're looking at your like library of work on like what can you revive and do different things i wonder if there's a universe where it's just like man if we could just just like let's let's just throw something together and just be like, hey, if we could do Halo, this is what we would do. Like, wouldn't this be cool? Like, or something that I would, I would love to see what that looked like. But I'm with you. I've never played Marathon. This is I was actually before my time. Like, it, it was just didn't know about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but we need we need something. So you said this this was across all systems, right? This is uh, PS5 and PC, PC, but okay. with full crossover. Okay. Between those two. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, more power to them. I I wonder how this impacts. Well, I guess we'll talk about that next. Is the next game Des- Destiny? The next game is yeah. on my list is Concord, but it's Destiny. Do we want to talk about Destiny 2 real quick? Too? You like, have the floor, my friend. 
I don't care about Destiny 2. Mm-hmm. So that I want to, and they, it, I forget what, do you remember what it's called? What was the, the no. actual title? Uh, it was like, like it's like the last triangle or something. Is it? I, I, the last I, it is it's something goofy like it's that. It's the last, last something. something. I don't think it's like the, the last triangle. shape or is it last shape? It, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh come on! I was close. Yeah, actually, last triangle, triangle sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> the last triangle. No, you're right. Was, the triangle was a shape. Um, Confirmed. Yeah, Cade Six coming back. Cool. Or Cade Seven or whatever yeah, it is. It's it's whatever Ryan was talking about. Destiny, bro. I look, man. I like Nathan Fillion as much as the next guy, but like. I don't time to put it to bed. I don't care. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things like where I don't know if they were talking about destiny where it's like, they were almost shooting themselves in the foot because they're like, where to begin? We killed gods and we did all of this and we did this. And like, dude, you're not selling this. All you're doing is telling me you missed too much. You're never going to know what the heck is up. Yeah. Don't even bother. Save your money is really what that trailer was. I thought they were going to do something like, we finally got to our place or it's just like, it all comes down to this or like some way to be like, look, whatever you think destiny Two is everything that's all happened or whatever. It's coming to this moment. The field is flat. Here is where you enter. You are on the same playing ground as everyone else. Yeah. Like they might have looked better than you or whatever, but it's like, this is the point. Here's good. Here's evil. Enjoy the finale of this 10 year series or whatever. That's what I thought they were going for, and yeah. it turned out like, don't even bother. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. okay, You're so they, exactly they had right. me for yeah. a second, and then I'm like, I don't care. I really wish uh, I would play Destiny, uh, but I I think what you just said is a perfect synopsis. I don't know how to enter this game. I tried um, every year. Every it's, expansion. it's so intimidating to me. I maybe tried one time. I was like, I can't access this game. This this feels inaccessible. Um, so I probably would have be that like every three seasons, pl- probably logging on and having fun, but they don't make it possible. So as much as I look at it, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on in the story. I love the gameplay of Destiny. I would love to be able to jump into that world, but I, I can't. Well, that's why. So that, that's kind of going full circle where it's like, okay, that seems very final. It seems like maybe Destiny 2 is like, maybe you're hanging out for a little mm-hmm. bit. Maybe you take a break or whatever, um, which would be great if they then focused on marathon and made marathon the next thing where like bring all that amazing shooting and gunplay and everything to marathon where it just feels so good. Awesome. Like yeah. I'm all for that, but yeah, I don't know, man. All right. Next on the list is Concord. Did you have a note on this, Jeff? I did have a note in this all and right. that's, this is where my marathon comment comes into play. I was really weirded out by why, how they went marathon destiny and then Concord. I thought they would have separated these three, um, IPs, but they didn't. Uh, so Concord has kind of been teased for a little bit now. It's coming to PS5 and PC. Um, it's by Firewalk Studios. So this is Firewalk Studios' first game. Um, if you're not familiar with who Firewalk Studio it, Studio is, it was basically a bunch of people from the creators of Mass Effect, Destiny, uh, Call of Duty, Halo, Apex Leg- Legends, came to- together, found this studio, and they're making a PvP shooter. So this is a game that is definitely going to try to compete with that time slot, try to t- grab people off of Apex Legends, off of Call of Duty, off of you know Destiny, and say, no, you want to come play our shooter. So I'll, I'm very interested to see what they deliver on. The trailer to me, I was very confused about. Um, I'm watching it again, and I'm like, I remember that burger, and I'm like, how do, how is this the burger? How do we know what it the, is exactly? So I had to look in, uh, look it up. I was like, yeah, and okay. I still don't understand it. Very, I thought the details in the trailer were were cool. Um, I didn't read the PlayStation blog about this one, so maybe I'm just misunderstanding some of the details in the trailer. Um, I'm just excited to see what this does. Does this have an impact on the on the gaming sphere as we? No, is this going to be up there on the you know top stream games on Twitch? Uh, I don't know. I'm just interested um, to see them do a marathon trailer, Destiny, and then Concord, which are three games that are basically competing for that time. I keep saying that over and over again, but I, just those three games, like which one are you going to play? You probably can't play all of them. Because there's, it takes too much time. Yeah, and, so. and which does Sony have more of a vested interest in? Correct. I would say mm. a, anything Bungie, yeah. where Correct. if you spend, was it sixteen billion or whatever they spent on it, eleven billion? Uh, was that Bethesda? I don't know. I get those confused. Bethesda. Maybe it was eight. I don't know. It wasn't that much because Sony doesn't have that much money. A Co- couple, so. billi- couple billion, though. Like, it was. It, it, it was, was in the billions. Yeah. So like, 
I feel like you maybe <laughs> pump up marathon and just see what's going on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. All right. Um, next two are probably skips. Uh, I think it's a Gran Turismo movie. Did I understand that correctly? <laughs> Like, what the fuck? I was really that? confused by this because I thought there was a Gran Turismo TV show coming to Peacock, and, and it, this is a movie. It's like a movie. So then it made me second guess, wait, is there a TV show? I have I no know. idea. I don't I, know either. not going to watch it. That's okay. I I'll probably yeah, see this care. movie. Really? Mm. Wow. Let me know how it is, man. Yeah. Mostly because Good there's a, a GTR like headlining it, like uh, one of my dream cars. So I don't know. I'm with you, but just play the game. You get to drive or the take that eighteen dollars for the ticket, put it in a savings account, and maybe buy one for yourself someday. <laughs> yeah. So this Watch is this movie's about a gamer who won a Gran Turismo tournament and was offered like a driving session on a track and was so good at the game that it, his skills translated to the track and he became a race car driver. It's a real life story. I'm kind of interested in it. It's um, a real life story. This is a real life story. That's crazy. So, I don't know. I, I I don't have high hopes for it, but you know, I, I I like to dabble in the um the film versions of video games, and I just want to kind of track studios. So, just to be clear, when you say it's a real life story, you're not saying this is a live action thing because we know it's live action. You're no, saying no, this, this is a real is a life story. This story happened, that in, happened the, yes. in the real life. That's that's, that's not. That actually um, has piqued my interest. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, so it sounds better than insane. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm basically, I'm also just interested in tracking Sony's forte into bringing these very traditional IPs into cinema, TV, because they're doing. They already did Last of Us. They're do now the Gran Turismo. They're doing Twisted Metal. So I want to see yeah, how it goes. That's a good point. Yeah. Twisted metal. Wow. Jeff just kind of reviving metal. some of these things I was sleeping on. Uh, the next one. Good luck with this Project Q, uh, which is like a I said Steam Deck. Tyler described it as a Switch-like uh, thing for the PlayStation. Oh, and your earbuds. Oh, you, me? Um, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't understand the earbuds. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand. I was flipping it over to you because you've been like, I've been down on a lot of these things, and you like explain, mm. and I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's cool. So I was like, try this. Maybe oh, yeah. you won't get you won't get here. <laughs> Maybe there are this. people who game with headbuds. I have never oh. done it. Oh. I will say the only thing that gets me here is head are buds. these are these Bluetooth and do they connect to PS5? Because we still cannot connect wireless headbud or ear, head. Headphones. Jesus, I can't say it. Uh, earbuds to earbuds, the PS5 yeah. via oh, Bluetooth. Oh, really? That is not a functionality. So if this is a functionality... It has to be because actually it connects to yeah. your phone. So it has to so be Bluetooth capable. This yep. is big. Uh, if the, if they if this is a wire, wireless audio option for your PS5, this will sell. I might mm, okay. purchase these. There are, there are a number of times where I came in where I was like, there, I wish I could just... There's not a wireless wireless. audio option for the Mm-mm. PS5? Mm-mm. There's not a wireless option. That, are you sure? Yeah. Not to call you a liar on the air, but it just seems like that's <laughs> Well, you guys are the techies. I I would be the one to be wrong about this. You, no, you could be 100% um, right for like Bluetooth. I could see it as like maybe like a dual band thing where it's like they're still going with it. Because like they're, like, obviously PS5 has wireless built into it because you have obviously like wireless controllers. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if they have it, they're their own proprietary wireless thing, which is what Xbox 360 did and then Xbox changed to Bluetooth. I, but I, yeah, I would, I yeah, you do some research put it on the next uh, okay. couch couch. <laughs> because I, I'm curious uh, if there's an answer I want to know because I need to purchase that option. Um, I know the PS5 recognizes all Bluetooth, Bluetooth devices, but when you go to connect, there's some kind of internal error. So if you have an option for me, fantastic. Um, the Project Q, I was super hyped on this until people kind of brought me down to earth and were like, dude, you can already do that. You just need to use your iPad. And I was like, what? You could do that with your iPad? Um, yeah, but so, so what? Like, you're not going to do that. I know some people do, and like, it's like, well, I'll do that with my iPad now. And like, sure, but imagine your iPad had a DualShock controller strapped mm-hmm. to it. Like, it's the convenience. It's not like, it's not a smart thing, but it's the convenience of it where it's like, I want to lounge on my couch. I don't want to sit in front of, well, I guess with PlayStation is a little bit different, but let's say you have your PlayStation next to your computer. And like, that's where I have my Switch set up. And it's like, I want to play Zelda on my couch. Pop it off the dock, play on your couch. So you can kind of do that too. It, I don't know. You think it'll be successful? I think the people that have a use for it, it'll be great. Like yeah. put it next to your bed, put it next to a different room, whatever. If your spouse is on the TV, 
and you just want to play it or whatever, it's like that's what that's for. Or parents and kids and different things. I think there's definitely a use for it. Yeah. I just think that people that want um, literally a Switch or people that want a, like a like a traveling companion, yes, they're going to be disappointed. But I don't like that's not what this is. This is a convenience like BS like Wii U yeah. <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> like, I, that's all that is. I'll be sold once I know the screen specs. Yeah, is um, it like OLED or whatever. Yeah, yeah. for me, the, where this would come big is as a streamer, my PlayStation is constantly hooked up to my capture card. And one of my biggest complaints about streaming is I miss my big screen. I mm-hmm. miss my LG that m- made every single game that I put on it, like in my opinion, look amazing. And my computer monitor does not have that effect. My com- I feel like when I plug in my PlayStation 5 to my computer, I see a dip in quality. So if this can deliver a similar view uh, of what I saw on my big screen in eight inch form with a high quality sc- screen resolution, I'm sold because I am not gonna be unplugging my PlayStation from my PC and streaming setup taking it to the TV every time I want to switch. If I can just, like you said, luxury, I'm laying down, I'm going downstairs, I'm going in, into bed, and I can just pop on and play a game that I want to play off stream I, at a, in a good picture, I'm sold. Yep. Cool. All right, last, certainly not least, my personal showcase of the event, Spider-Man 2. Yeah, I was, I was bait and switched. What do you mean? I th- I thought it was a game about Craven, the hunter. What? You know the guy in the very beginning of the trailer? Yeah. Craven? Yeah. The hunter. Well, I didn't know. So that's a character from the comics? Yeah, and like the, that was from the Amazing Spider-Man TV show yeah. and everything. And like, I did like, not they, know who uh, that was. People were freaking the I, fuck out. I was so excited because I'm like, that's what I want. I want a... St- and I could keep bringing up stealth games, but I'm just so mad that Gollum sucks. <laughs> I just... I, I'm like... Craven could be such a oh, sick, I see what you're saying. like prowling, like just yeah. that would be such a cool character to. But to he's play the as. villain. He's a villain, yeah. Which I think is cool. Yeah, so I got really hyped, and it still was a cool trailer, and I'll let you guys talk about it. But it was just like, I was so excited, <laughs> <laughs> and then for it to be like, like because he's like, oh, I guess I'm gonna go to Spider Man. Like it's a sweet spin off, like kind of like almost like a Miles Morales like type of thing. It's like, nah, this is like Spider Man too. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. uh, this trailer did not really hit for me. Um, Ooh, interesting. Okay. I'm super hyped. Don't get me wrong. Super hyped for Spider-Man 2. Definitely going to play it. Already, you know, day one purchase. Uh, I don't need to see the reviews. But for some reason, this this trailer, um, I don't know what is missing. I, I was a little bit confused by it as well, where uh, they're showing, like, this picture on a tablet to Craven, And it's like, oh, the next big hunt. And it's Spider-Man. And then they get down to Earth or wherever they're traveling from, and then they're hunting, like, lizard guy. I, I, I don't know why I can't remember the lizard's enemy name, the bad guy. It's called the lizard. No, it's not. Yeah. His name's the lizard? Yeah, Kirk Connors. Lizard. Mm-hmm. That's it? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Okay, well... They Spider-Man get- doesn't have that good of villains. <laughs> like, they're, they're fine. <laughs> um, well, but they're the guy that inspired. shocks people. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> you know the guy with, with eight arms? Oc- <laughs> Doc Oc- <laughs> doctor Oc- At least he's a doctor. <laughs> you know the really mysterious guy with a <laughs> fishbowl <laughs> on his head? <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I, I loved it. Um, you know the guy that looks like a scorpion? <laughs> <laughs> Scorpy? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, was, I don't know why. You I know the rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I don't know. You're not wrong. 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 I, I, like, I don't know why that threw me off so much. Like, why are they after the lizard? I, I, I was confused when I thought they were hunting Spider-Man. I, I don't know why, but I wasn't gelling with the Venom suit. Um, Interesting. I, I like the subtlety of that. Yeah. Actually, I liked how he was. Um, and I don't know how far into that game was, but like, if, if you watch the like the cartoon. He was super pumped for the suit. He's like, this is the coolest thing ever. And he just got like progressively and progressively more aggressive and more like whatever. So all the little subtle things were like he saves a guy, but then like throws, throws him. him. Yeah. And like I noticed that too. Obviously it's framed and it's like you're supposed to notice it, but like over the the scheme of the trailer, that was a subtle thing. I'm like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that. Like, so depending on how that works. It could be neat. I yeah. don't know. I, I can't really put a, uh, my finger on why this didn't 
do it for me. I, I'm pumped for the game. I love Miles. I love the first one. Um, Platinum, the first one, was on my way to Platinum. The second one, and I don't, I can't remember what came out, but I, I start. Oh, never mind. Uh, I remember. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The trailer. Is, I, I feel like a Debbie Downer. I don't really know why. I was super hyped. Personally. Okay, let's hear it. Let's um, hear it, John. Okay, I will say my one criticism. I think it was too long. It was it's, very long. It was like 12 and I was minutes. Like, and you were talking about this yesterday. It was like, would I have rather experienced this mm-hmm. than, but now I know this whole sequence. So I'm trying to do a positive spin where it's like, oh, they feel comfortable showing this, which means I can't wait for what else, you know, because that was pretty hype. It was a pretty awesome sequence. Um, I don't know. It just, this got me excited. Like, Back in Spider-Man, the combat still looks awesome. I liked the Venom stuff. Like, he's throwing people around, like, four people at a time. I thought it was really cool. It's a good way to differentiate, like, okay, you're going to be playing between all these characters. They have to have very different movesets. Because, like, I haven't finished uh, Miles Morales, but it's like, there's still some... It's there. Yeah. So, like, if it's Venom, like, by all means, like, go for it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I like that. He's switching to Miles with... Which is super cool. I like that dynamic. Um, like you were saying, the Venom arcs like always so awesome. Like Spider Man Three, great movie. <laughs> uh, where it's like, yeah, we kind of see this descent from Peter. Um, I love how I just hear Sasuke now because he's getting super edgy. <laughs> so it's like uh, same voice actor. So that's that's funny. But yeah, I I just thought it was super cool. I'm hyped. First one game was amazing, obviously, and then this one just got me there. My only criticism, maybe a little too long, and I wish I knew who the guy. I didn't even know who Craven was. Well, I'm not a huge Marvel guy, so it's like it's weird because like in the cartoon, and I might be, no, I don't think I'm misremembering, but it was like when when Peter Parker got the six arms because that was like he before he was like turning into like a freaking spider. Yeah, it was him and Morbius that like saved him. <laughs> So yeah. like it was like these weird like the villains are like actually like tackling him and like injecting him with like <laughs> a serum and stuff. <laughs> so like I don't know, man. Like they could go some like if if this is like an Arkham City type of thing, which I was getting excited about. Where I thought the biggest issue I had with Spider Man One was like, why do you have a new character, like a new villain? Like you have all these greatly named other villains <laughs> to, to pick from. Yeah. Why why make a new person yeah right. so if if spider-man 2 can really dial in on like get kingpin go and get all like you know smite and all like if you just get all of the like the rogue gallery uh in there i think that'd be you have the awesome. material yeah you have the material which so, is yeah which is what arkham city did where arkham right. city was just pulling yep. from like okay you yep. you 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 here's yep. a twist here's a twist like yep that'd be sick because like you already spider-man you did the arc of like what Doc Ock's a bad guy? Oh, no. like, <laughs> now it's like okay, w- what's driving everybody? I think that could be really cool. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, I'm hyped. I mean, it, it was very Uncharted great. Four. Like okay. Uncharted Four had the same 20 minute yeah. slice that was like, look how crazy this thing is. And when you play through Uncharted Four, there's 25 yep. other That's crazy the vibe set I pieces, get. That's and it still is way different playing that than watching it. It might be the same. But trust me, when you're playing it, it's like oh, you're, it's, you're not going to be as like fluid as the guy that built the game and is <laughs> running it through for the 20th time. Right. I, don't know. I think something notable that I did notice um, from this trailer was no release date. Yeah. So they gave fall. I was very, very surprised that the game this far along did not give a specific release date. And I, I would, I'm not saying it's going to get delayed, but I think we should be watching for when this game goes gold because that was my, I was like, why did they not did give Starfield a release date? Did Starfield get a new release date? No. That maybe, maybe. But we're thinking, uh, yeah. You know it, what I mean? They, like they if you're, be, if you're yeah. doing it, it's like, yeah, that's right. Dude, it could be in the vault ready to go right now. But until you find out when Starfield's coming Don't out, it's just like, let's wait for Microsoft to do their thing next month or whatever it is. And then we'll we'll lay ours down, and then you have Zelda, Starfield, and Spider Man, and duke it out. Awesome, awesome comment. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely could be it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, look, or, or they wait, and they're like, "This game really needs like another maybe six <laughs> months." But if Mike, like we we have Microsoft on the ropes, we need to to Vision. hammer them. Yeah. yeah. Or me, <laughs> dude. They like this is how cynical I am. Maybe they're waiting to see if like so the EU passed 
the the mm-hmm. merger for Microsoft. Maybe they're still waiting on the FCC. They're waiting on like it's like let's see all this other or FTC, FTC Trade Commission, right? I don't know. And you're I don't know what it is. Here. I don't know. Whatever. Um, no, no, no. For here. Oh, is it FTC or FCC? FTC. FCC is something else. Yeah, FTC. FTC. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. But they're waiting. There's like all right, let's see what happens because then it's like okay, we'll delay Spider Man for six months. Please don't don't let them merge. Yeah. Please, please, government. Like, that's cynical. I don't even know if that's even a thing or a possibility, but that's where my mind's at, where it's like everything isn't about the consumer or the game or the, the quality of it. It's all how can we manipulate our standing within the marketplace. I don't want to end on that note. That's a really low <laughs> that's that's my pay grade. Uh, do we want to talk about things that we wish were in the in the conference that maybe wasn't? I heard Bloodborne was coming around again for the 20th <laughs> Freaking time! I Didn't just, happen. I just wanted to see Ghost of Tsushima too. I'm pretty sure they announced that it wasn't going to be there. I've been looking uh, to see this game announced for so long. Um, that's that was really my hope, but mine was Wolverine. Wolverine, yeah. Mm. Mine was uh, FF7 Rebirth. Okay, I'm so hyped for that. But it makes sense. 16's not out. That's going to get the spotlight. Yeah, we've seen so much of that fucking game. I too much. Too much. Every time they do this, I get dude. Yeah. That's gonna be like a seventy-hour game. You you saw. I'm so hyped five for it, minutes. Dude. Of it. <laughs> I'm so hyped for it. Oh, it looks so cool! Like the last trailer they did for that, where they're like going into like your home base thing mm-hmm. and like how they're gonna give you like the lore. Like it's like you're mm-hmm. unlocking sections of the lore. Don't, and don't give him. Don't give him any spoilers, man. No, you watch that one. Mm-mm. Uh oh! I, I no, I you're good. You're good. <laughs> it's, it was super cool. I think this one was cool too because it was like your complaint. Like mm-hmm. it was like all about the party. Anyways, yeah. I digress. The showcase was cool. I would give it maybe like an eight out of ten. Okay, solid. Yeah, yeah it was good. But didn't blow my dick off, but it was solid. Yeah, I, pr- I, I don't think there was anything I was like. Yeah. Oh, this has to be. A lot of it was expected, right? <laughs> tell, tell you what. The most disappointment I had was Cat Quest. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it really was. It really like out of out of every single trailer that was like 2024, 2024, 2024, fall, whatever. I was like, okay, all more right, disappointing whatever. than um, more disappointing than the Spider-Man one where you thought it was uh, Craven. After all said and done, yeah, I think so. Okay, because like, Cra- Craven, it was like, oh, that'd be sick. Pirates of the Caribbean. And it wasn't like Cat Quest. I had to watch the entire tra- the entire trailer, get hyped, and then be like. Boom. Next year, yep. it's like, dude, you maybe it should just, be the whole game. It's, it's, pro- right there. it's probably early next year, though. If that gives you any solace. Hopefully, I just thought that they would drop something like Microsoft does, where it's like, and play it today. Nintendo and Microsoft do that a really great job with that. High Fi Rush? You kidding me? Yeah, that was awesome. You kidding that me? That was cool. They started the year off strong, man, yeah. but now uh, we're uh, really we don't talk Steve. about that. Microsoft has pressure, dude. We did play Redfall. We didn't talk I'm about. I'm sorry that about that. So bad. Oh, yeah. So bad. And at least it was on Game Pass. I lost all my progress. Oh, nice. So I hosted the game. Solidified. Everyone for him. quit, and then I quit. <laughs> I lose all my progress. Oh, no. So that was two and a half hours of, like they all kept all their stuff. Yep. I got nothing. That's crazy. Nothing. So and it's not like so other people were like, well, sometimes you lose, like you might lose your progress, but you keep your guns and experience. I got nothing. <laughs> what what a boring like, game, dude. Yeah. Again, I'm, I don't want to do it on the bad note. I'm sorry. Uh, I will Thanks give for this, coming, Joe. I will, would give this showcase a 9.5. Whoa. Um, this is probably the most exciting show I've seen since that E3 that where they originally announced the Final Fantasy VII remake. And it was yeah. like, I don't know if there was a cyberpunk reveal at that one too, but there was like three really big reveals at that E3, Final Fantasy remake being one of them. I thought that this was so well done. Um, hit all their marks. They hit uh, even just us going through the games, they hit a lot of games. Mm-hmm. They hit a lot of different kind of games. They hit their indies, their Metroidvanias, their free to play shit that nobody's going to play. Well, actually, a lot of people are going to play. We're not going to play. Um, they even snuck in their um, move into cinema and TV. I, I just thought it was so well done. They did a little bit of a hardware reveal. Um, I think it shows developers' willingness to work with Sony and the Sony platform. We're seeing um, a lot of announcements. A lot of uh, some of it was expected, but some of these were just we've never saw these games before. So, what is Xbox going to do? A lot of these games are coming to Xbox, but it makes a difference knowing that Sony revealed them. It shows that partners want 
to put their game on a Sony showcase. They trust Sony's platform and they trust their their players. Um, I also love that there was a lot of developers from different countries. We've got a Chinese developer in there, a Swedish developer in there. Love that. Um, we're seeing a lot of PS5 plus PC releases, which I think is really great for Sony. They're usually the hardest ones to play ball. They're putting a huge initiative behind their PC market. They're trying to make more money off of PC with their IP. I'm really glad that they're starting to share their IPs more. Um, that was huge for me. So uh, for me, this was an awesome showcase. Awesome. Well said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th- I think with Microsoft, it's like, look, they they know they have to knock it out of the park. Yeah. Like, cr- like crazy... Even if you, you gave like a nine point five out of Microsoft, like for Microsoft too, like it's still not like they're they they're, had to one up them. Yeah, they're so yeah so behind uh, from recent stuff where it's like I if, have zero if faith, they by can't the way. if they can't do something amazing, like it's it's going to be worse than if Redfall was fine or if everything was just like middling or whatever and it was all like good, then they could maybe get away with something that's a bit like man, they, I don't envy them at all. <sighs> No. You know, and I don't want to come off as like a PlayStation fanboy because I'm not. Uh, Xbox 360, probably my favorite console of all time. I thought it was revolutionary. You don't get the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 without the innovation that Xbox 360 sure. brought at that time. Um, I'm rooting for Xbox. I want them to have a spectacular lineup of games coming in 2024. I, Based off of the Phil interview, I think they're not... In a good place. They're in trouble. Um, See, I took it differently. I took it as like, if if they can just get through this, like I almost look at it like they're running through like a football training course, and all the critics and people on the internet and stuff are just beating them to death as they're like just getting through everything. And if they can just come out the side without fumbling the ball or without like just <laughs> falling on the ground, then it's like, here's your fable and your you know. Dude, I don't even know what else is coming. Out. Like you know, like here, here are all the games that like of all the studios we bought and promised you mm-hmm. and different things like that. But yeah, uh, I, I sincerely hope as well they they do because competition's always good and we get the best stuff when those two are at the top of their game. If right? they put so. all their eggs in the Blizzard basket, which I mean that's sixty nine billion eggs, like <laughs> that worries me. Yeah. Where if you if you divert everything to that and like your focus is on that, that you're losing your focus on. Hey, maybe Red Fogel's developers could have used some extra help here or do this. Like Red <laughs> Redfall is beyond saving. So I know people are like, "Oh, you could get the sixty frames." You, like, give it one hundred and twenty frames. You're not saving that game. The yeah. fundamentals of that game are bad. So it's just like, put it aside, move on. Starfield better be great. <laughs> I think they're moving past Redfall pretty yeah, I swiftly. I yes. think they did a good job, just kind of like you said, not sweeping it under the rug, but. Hey, it is what it is. Let's focus on moving forward. Let's focus yep. on Starfall. Um, I, God, please. I, I hope they bring something. I hope yeah. something new. Well, with that being said, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us, Jeff. We always love having you on. Thank you. The discussion Truly. is inspired yeah. and uh, it ignites my passion for games. <laughs> Just listening to you talk about games gets me hyped. There's a lot of things I wasn't even considering where you talk about the background of it, the research that you put into it gets me more hyped than the trailers. So oh, you guys get me hyped too. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I feel like we did. I feel like a lot yeah, of us were like, yeah. I'm down on this. Like, well, what about this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we're like, so that was awesome. So I, yeah. I enjoyed that conversation. Um, for everyone listening, if you made it this far, awesome. Uh, check out Jeff, What Killed Jeff, twitch.tv slash What Killed Jeff. He streams Monday through Friday. Correct. One to six, I think, are his new hours. It's one to six and somewhere in between. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. super fun stream. I try to tune in when I can. Jeff's got great takes on games, the passion for games. <laughs> Love it. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to be here same time, same place. Yeah, if you want to see our stuff too, it's couchcompany.games. It, 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 you do you. <laughs> <laughs> you messed up the intro, you may as well mess up the, the ending too. <laughs> My brain is fried. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for joining us on the couch. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>